It was the last lap and I was in the final stretch. There was only one car ahead of me and I could see the finish line coming close. So I pushed on the acceleration as far as it could go. Suddenly I heard a weird noise coming from the engine and lost control at once. The car started spinning like crazy and off the track onto the grass. Hi, I'm Natalie and it's me behind that wheel. You may be wondering how I got myself into that situation. So let's begin from the start. I was born into a racing family, so the passion for sports naturally ran in my veins. But my life somehow resembled Maggie Payton in the movie Herbie, as my dad didn't allow me to race. Instead, he put all his faith in my adopted brother, Jeremy, and by pouring everything he knew into teaching him, with a hope that he'd become a great racer. Only the explanation to this wasn't as complex as in the movie. My mom passed away when I was a newborn, but no vehicle accident was involved. It's just my dad was of the opinion that ladies should be gentle and sweet. So he forbade me from participating in racing or anything even remotely dangerous. Despite that, growing up with Jeremy by my side was truly a blessing. Although not related by blood, we were very close. Jeremy often let me take the wheel of his race car without dad knowing, and he even taught me all he had learned from dad. Over time, I was able to catch up to him in terms of racing prowess. Today, he had a big race, and as usual, I went to his room to check on him. But he was still in bed. His face was pale, and obviously, he was in pain. Jeremy, what's wrong? I think I got food poisoning from that gas station hot dog. Gosh, just drop it. You can't drive in this condition. I can't. This is the qualifying round for the championship season. Dad will be so disappointed in me. So, there's only one way. Hey, I can drive in your place. Are you crazy, Natty? Blah! Jesus, see? There's no time. Under the racing gear, nobody can tell us apart. He was reluctant for a while, but finally gave in. So here I am, in a super cool appearance. I felt a wave of exhilaration that sent me sprinting to the track. Passing other racers with deft accuracy, I left trails of smoke in my wake as I smoothly swerved into the tight turns. When I reached the final lap, I gave it my all and finished in first place. Yippee! I got back to the waiting area after the race, then was suddenly dragged away. Hey, Jeremy's here. I'm all right now. Just want to make sure you made it out okay. Congrats on first place. Thank you. Now switch clothes with me. They need to see your face on the podium. As Jeremy raised up the trophy, I couldn't help but imagine myself in his place, overcome with happiness. That evening, the race was replayed on TV. Jeremy, your style is different today. You finally understood how to drive more freely. I've always said you have potential, yet you don't have the guts to shatter limitations. But if you keep racing like that, we may need to get you another trophy shelf. Uh, yes, I'll try. You were really cool today. Keep up the good work. After that race, I still felt the electric rush lingering in my bones. So I asked Jeremy to let me keep taking his place. Enough, Natty. Last time I did it as a last resort. You don't really want to be a racer anyway. Let me help you. In the meantime, you can focus on your passion. Seeing him hesitate, I continued. If you're afraid of being caught, just be there at all times so we can swap back whenever we need to. Jeremy's Jeremy. Couldn't say no to my puppy eyes. After that, I wore Jeremy's racing suit and entered all of his competitions. During that time, Jeremy would covertly hide among the crowd and wait. Oh, did I mention that my brother is a huge crochet fanatic? He even runs an Etsy business stocked with incredible pieces he made all by himself. Things were going kind of smoothly, but public practice was out of the question because we had to keep this a secret from dad. So Jeremy's plan was for me to pretend to be dating the team mechanic, Royce, also his best friend. This would give me an excuse to go to the track on a regular basis to practice. The following day, Jeremy took me to meet Royce, and luckily he was so friendly and agreed to assist us right away. Although balancing school and racing was hard, I still nailed it beautifully. At school, nobody knew I came from a racing family as we never appeared together in public. Not to brag, but a lot of guys were smitten with me. However, this dude, Liam, stood out. He's actually Jeremy's biggest racing rival, so I couldn't help but laugh internally as he made many attempts at wooing me in school. If you were a vegetable, you'd be a cute-cumber. Just to turn green with envy at me on the racetrack, as he had no idea it was me under this costume. <laughs> it made sense, given he hadn't lost to Jeremy this many times before. Yeah! Hey, Jeremy, what's your deal? Your racing style has changed so drastically. Just then, a staff member from our team turns to me. Yeah, and you've been really quiet lately. Uh, um, <clears throat> I'm just focusing on the competition. And so this began my official rivalry between Liam and I. We were racing neck and neck, but all of a sudden my engine died and stopped in the middle of the track. I watched as a few cars zoomed past me and Liam took the win. My win. 
Seeing that dude get out of his car and reveal his smug face had my blood boiling. The next week, I was in another race to make up for last week's fiasco, but this time I had a flat tire. Were the racing gods against me beating Liam? Due to my recent losing streak, some of my sponsors threatened to have their sponsorship withdrawn if I don't win the next race. So this time, I got Royce to double check, no, triple check that the car was ready to race. I scrutinized every nook and cranny, same as the last few races. If something goes wrong again, then my guess is that you have a petty guy willing to sabotage you. My next race was going well, but on the last lap, as I reached a tight turn, I pressed on the brake and my car was not slowing down. Time seemed to slow as the wall rushed closer. My palms clenched the steering wheel. It was a dance of split-second decisions and instinct, but I managed to swerve, the tire screeching in protest as I narrowly avoided disaster. Close shave. I looked over to the finish line and saw that Liam had once again secured first place. He was definitely behind this. So I quickly got changed and barged into Liam's waiting room to confront him. Oh, my angel. What are you doing in this fiery battlefield? It's you who played tricks on me, my brother. Right? Spit it out. Your brother? Who? Jeremy Wilson? You sabotaged someone else's car too, or what? What are you talking about? Drop the act. You're the one who benefits the most if my brother loses. Recently, his car kept breaking down. This can't be a coincidence. It just seems like luck is on my side. See, the girl I like also happens to come from a famous racing family. We're a match made in heaven. How can you be so casual about this? Don't you know how dangerous it is to drive with broken brakes? If not for my driving skills, I would have been injured. Wait, your driving skills? Were you the one driving the car? Um, I mean, my brother. Oh my god, it's you! I knew something's off lately. Watch your tongue. I, I didn't say anything. Focus on the actual conversation. You either confess to the crime or I will investigate and expose your true face to the whole world. Mark my words. I couldn't believe I just let my secret slip to my biggest rival. If Jeremy knew this, he'd definitely tell me to quit racing. So after a sleepless night, I decided to meet Liam for a proper talk, but he found me first. Are you Google? Cause you have everything I'm searching for. Stop messing around. I'm not done with you yet. The you broke my car case? I had no idea about it, I swear. I'm competitive, but not that low. But isn't it normal for a car to suddenly break down sometimes? Put that aside. Anyway, have you told anyone about my identity yet? No, but what's up with that? I want you to keep your mouth shut. So let's make a deal. What do you want? Except for a date like in some sappy rom-coms, of course. Then nothing. Just don't avoid me anymore. And tell me why you have to disguise as your brother. That's none of your business. All right, then I'll ask someone else. Ugh, fine. Just promise you won't tell anyone. Then I told Liam everything. And since that day, he had officially become my shadow. No matter at school or on the track. I need to complain to Spotify for not naming you this week's hottest single. Oh wow, they really look cute together. Even though they're competitors, love always wins. And that's how we accidentally became a gay couple in the racing scene. At first, I found Liam very annoying, but soon I realized his great passion for racing matched my own, and his insights into the racing world were unexpectedly captivating. I found myself opening up to Liam, sharing my thoughts and feelings with ease, and somehow felt happy around him. But the mystery around my broken car hadn't unfolded, so I couldn't let my guard down. And here comes the last qualifying match before the championships. My dad was also here today to motivate everyone. I was so nervous, yet still had to act lovey-dovey with Royce in front of dad. Obviously, Liam wasn't happy about that. He kept coming in between us, even though he knew we were just pretending. Natalie, focus! I couldn't stand to keep my secret any longer. So I gotta carry the day to prove myself, then reveal the truth to him and race under my own identity. I turned on the engine's full power and felt its huge force as I raced. My helmet fought the wind, and the air surge was like a thrilling symphony. It was the last lap, and I was in the final stretch. There was only one car ahead of me, Liam's car, and I could see the finish line coming close. So I pushed on the acceleration as far as it could go. As I raced past him, I was both precise and fast. My heart pounded in my chest, and I could feel an adrenaline rush through my body. Suddenly, a strange sound came from my car, and I lost control at once. The car started spinning like crazy and off the track onto the grass. I was dizzy, but lucky enough, not a scratch. As I came to, the first person I saw was Liam. He dropped everything just to check that I was okay. He took me to my pit stop, where my teammates rushed over to support. 
Suddenly, my dad appeared. I was panicking and I didn't know where to go or hide when... Natalie, no need to hide anymore. I already know. <sighs> How? That doesn't matter. Look at you. What a mess. I just wanted to prove to you that I can do it. This is my passion. Why do you always stop me? Your passion? You mean falling off the track? You just ignored all the times I'd won first place. You're a terrible, selfish, evil father who has no love for your children and always forces others to do this, do that. People don't respect you because they want to. Everyone only listens to you because they're afraid of you, just like me and Jeremy. Just then, Dad slapped me hard across the cheek. I stumbled back and fell onto Liam. It was you, wasn't it? I, uh, I'm sorry. I just couldn't watch you get yourself in danger anymore. Meeting you is my entire life's greatest regret. Before anyone could see me cry, I ran away. I have nothing left. No one understands me. No one. I lay there in my room, consumed by a cloud of gloom after Dad's week-long grounding. Suddenly, a pebble knocked at my window. It was Liam. He was trying to throw a rope up to me. After a moment of hesitation, I finally climbed down. I'm sorry I went behind your back. I didn't know your dad would go that far. I care about you and just want you to be safe. But now I realize the way to do that is to find the true culprit who vandalized your car. Liam's apology felt really sincere. Look at him. I couldn't stay mad forever. The last time you raced, you never left your car side. The pre-checks are where we need to look into. Are you sure you can fully trust this Royce guy? He's my brother's best friend. Why would he sabotage me? You're just being subjective. Suddenly, a memory resurfaced in me. <gasps> Last week, I saw Royce lingering around the car for longer than the usual inspection. He told me that I need a new head gasket or else I wouldn't be able to accelerate without blowing the engine. Now, when I think of it, it seems kind of fishy. So we rushed to Royce's shop immediately. Natalie, what are you doing here? I'm sorry to hear things have been rough between you and your dad. But you're not sorry for almost taking my life? What are you talking about? Cut the act. I've got all the evidence against you. What evidence? Shut up. I have CCTV footage of your criminal acts. If I give it to the racing committee, you'll be out for good. What do you think? My hands were trembling as I hoped that Royce couldn't see through my bluff. But shockingly, Royce's face went pale and he crumbled to the ground. All right, Natalie, it's me. But I didn't mean to hurt you. I just want to help Jeremy. How does that help Jeremy? Actually, I have a crush on him and Jeremy confided in me once. I don't know what to do. I love Natalie very much, but I always feel self-conscious in front of her. I'm just an adopted child. Becoming a racer is all that my dad wishes for me. If I stop racing, he won't love me anymore. Meanwhile, Natalie's far better than me from the beginning. If dad finds out I'm such a loser, he will disown me. Jeremy, my poor brother. I just wanted to scare you into not racing. Everything I did to your car was carefully deliberated beforehand so that you wouldn't get hurt. I'm sorry. I'll find a way to fix everything. I got home later that night, only to hear arguing from the living room. What you did to Natalie was unfair. You kept her from doing what she loves, just like me. I've never dared to admit this, but now, Dad, racing isn't my passion. This is. What? But you find it too girly, right? Actually, I just race to please you. And only this simple thing makes me happy. Unable to stand by, I interjected, revealing how Jeremy was living in so much fear among his own family. They were shocked for a moment. Then Dad said, Jeremy, it's all my fault to put so much pressure on you and make you feel like you weren't loved enough. You're always my son, no matter if you choose racing or not. And Natalie, I'm sorry for hitting you. The pain on your cheek may have gone, but still lingers in my hand. I just didn't want to risk losing you. I never told you this, but when your mother was pregnant with you, she got sick, and I could have lost both of you when she went into labor. Ever since that day, I swore to keep you safe, alive, and healthy. Dad, I love you, but I love racing too. I hope that I can count on your support on the track. Then I revealed that Royce was the one who sabotaged my car. They were both shocked and furious, especially Jeremy. But after being told a full story, they decided to forgive Royce as he showed his remorse by confessing his crime and was temporarily suspended. We had not seen him since then. True compassion lies not only in caring for someone, but also in caring for them in the right way. Misguided intentions can unintentionally sow the seeds of unintended consequences. Finally, I could officially join the race using my own name. Dad came to see me today as well. He seemed quite concerned, but encouraged me anyway. Suddenly, Liam approached me. If I win this time, fair and square, would you go on a date with me? You have no chance to win, but a date? You earned it.
Lisa, Lisa, wait up! I slowed down, then turned around and smiled at Emily as she hurried to catch up with me. Well, spit it out. What hot tea do you get this time? Lisa, you are not going to believe this. Eden likes you. I raised an eyebrow. Huh? You're kidding, right? No. She furiously shook her head. It's true. Yesterday afternoon, after school, I passed by the basketball court, and I overheard the boys talking about it. Um, I think the likelihood is you heard wrong, my friend. As I continued on my way to school, I couldn't stop thinking about Emily's words. As if Eden Woodson, the most popular boy in the entire school, would like me? Impossible! Um, had we even spoken to each other? Oh yeah, once. In the library, he asked to borrow my pen. <sighs> Not to mention his last girlfriend, Sarah, was the captain of the cheerleading squad. So, yep, you can already tell how pretty and popular she was. They only split up because she moved away. Well, look at me. Talent? Well, my coordination is zero. Thanks to being short-sighted. Pretty? Nope. And my Coke bottle glasses don't help in this department. The only thing I was okay at was studying, which is why I was assigned the role of class president. Think fast. A cheerleader versus a class president? See? Figured. Throughout the day, Emily wouldn't quit insisting that what she'd heard was correct. Ugh, I know she meant well, but didn't she realize how humiliating this was for me? Even if she did hear Eden say that, he was probably just kidding around. Emily, please stop. I just want to take these tests in Mrs. Pierce's classroom, then go home. But Lisa... I gave her my best, I'm being serious look, so she let out a defeated sigh. Nodded, then walked away from me. Finally, peace at last. I dropped the tests off, then as I was walking back along the corridor, I saw Eden leaning against his locker as he talked to a boy on the basketball team. Hmm. For some reason, curiosity got the best of me, so instead of walking past them, I found myself ducking behind the corner and eavesdropping on their conversation. So, what else are you still waiting for? Talk to her! I really want to, but I don't know. <sighs> <laughs> As if the most popular boy in school is dumbstruck by some girl. Who are they talking about? Could it be... me? No way. Lisa, please wake up and stop being so delusional. Fact. Boys like Eden would never lay an eye on girls like you. The next morning at school, I walked into class to see the boys, including Eden, chatting about last night's NBA score or something. Only, Eden wouldn't quit staring at me. Um, did I have something on my face? My eyes met his, and then he immediately turned away and resumed the conversation with his friends like nothing happened. Huh? What did that mean? Then, during chemistry class, I kept sensing this strange feeling coming from behind, so by instinct, I turned around to check, and surprise, surprise, I saw Eden looking at me. But just like earlier, as soon as our gazes met, he stared down at his book. Okay, so that was weird. While I was thinking about his strange behavior, Emily suddenly nudged my arm. See, I told you he likes you. You should tell him you like him, too, before it's too late. <laughs> um, no thanks. But what do you mean by too late? I heard that Sarah, you know, his ex, is coming back. Her parents divorced or something. So what? Come on, Lisa. He likes you. But I don't like him. As soon as I finished talking, I saw the teacher glancing straight at me. Oh no. Busted. He made me stand up in front of everyone and answer a question. But of course, I hadn't been listening. So I just stood there doing this open-mouthed goldfish look then frantically looked around to find some help with the answer. And when I peered over at Eden, oh great, he was grinning at me. This was so embarrassing. That night, I lay in bed and got lost in thoughts about Eden. Okay, so I know I told Emily I didn't like him, 
It's just that I still didn't believe that someone like him could have a crush on someone like me. Curious, I spent the whole evening stalking Eden's social media account. Not gonna lie, he was indeed really cute. There were loads of pics of him watching basketball matches with his little bro, pulling goofy faces with his friends, and spending time with his family at the beach. Um, so there were also a few pics of him with his ex, and I noticed that she'd commented on some of his recent stuff. I really wished I was brave enough to start a conversation with him, or to even ask him if he still kept in touch with his ex-girlfriend. But that would be weird, wouldn't it? But then, guess what? To my utter disbelief, the next morning, my homeroom teacher walked in, and following her was... S- Sarah? Oh no, I should have listened to Emily on this one. Um, so did this mean Eden would get back with her? All day long, Sarah clung onto Eden, so it wasn't long before the rumors started buzzing around school that the dream couple was back together. Not only was this bad enough to deal with, but I also had to put up with Emily's I told you so looks. Whatever, the two of them dating had nothing to do with me, right? They could do what they wanted, and I was just going to carry on with my life. But, jeez, this Sarah girl needed to stop spamming everyone's timeline with all these old photos when she and Eden were still in love. Not to mention the cheesy, cringy captions. Okay, I guess my heart ached a little. <sighs> but anyway, I knew I shouldn't care about them. Only, it soon became pretty obvious that Sarah was bothered by me. Every time she passed me in the corridor, she glanced at me and sneered. Huh? Why the attitude? I barely knew the girl. Then one time, I was heading over to the cafeteria when someone shoved me from behind, causing me to fall face first on the ground. Confused, I quickly fumbled for my glasses. Huh? What was that sound? Then suddenly, I heard Emily scream out. Lisa, you just stepped on your glasses! Oh no, now how was I supposed to live without my glasses? Emily had to guide me back to class, and that day, I could only listen to the lectures, because I couldn't see well enough to take notes. By the end of the day, I was fed up and just wanted to go home. I was about to ask Emily to help me walk home, so I didn't end up getting flattened by a bus or something, but before I could ask her... She packed up at lightning speed, said bye, then hurried out of there. Hayes, how thoughtful was my dear bestie? Great. Guess I would just have to navigate my way home alone somehow. It took me ages just to get from the classroom to the school gate. Then I almost bumped into someone. But fortunately, there was a hand that pulled me back. You okay? Came a familiar voice. Eden? I is that you? I asked. Yeah, I'm here, and I'm not having your death on my conscience, <laughs> so I'm walking you home. He took my hand. Eek! My heart somersaulted. Then he led me to the nearby glasses store so I could buy a new pair. After that, he still insisted on walking me home, though, and on the way, we talked loads, mainly about our families and our love of indie movies. Still, I couldn't help but have Sarah at the back of my mind. I just wanted to ask him about their relationship. But now wasn't the right time. Right? A few days later, during a math test, I felt something hit my back, then fall to the ground. So, I picked it up, but before I could see what it was, the teacher quickly walked over, grabbed it, and opened it. Turns out, it was some of the answers to the test. Oh no! I tried explaining myself, but he told me I would get detention and was not allowed to take the test anymore. What? I couldn't get an F on my math test. It would ruin both my transcript and my college application record. I cried out to him that this wasn't fair, when suddenly, Eden stood up and said, Sir, it was my sheet, not Lisa's. So both of us ended up being banned from taking the test and the teacher believed that because I picked the note up, I was still just as guilty. I didn't think this day could get any worse. Oh, how wrong I was. During recess, I was rearranging my books in my locker when Sarah approached me. Hey, how 
dare you let Eden take the blame for your actions? As class president, you should be totally ashamed of yourself. What are you talking about? Your innocent routine may fool Eden, but you aren't fooling me. You wait and see, as I still have bigger plans coming for you. Bigger? What other plans did you have? Huh? Am I missing something? Um, I mean, stop ruining things between Eden and me, else I won't let it slide next time. Um, what was that about? Why was Sarah blaming me? Jeez, this whole situation was crazy. After school, Eden and I had to stay behind for an extra hour for detention. Luckily, our homeroom teacher knew that neither of us would cheat, as we were both exemplary students. So that punishment was just a warning. Then, on our way out of the classroom, I asked him, I know that paper wasn't yours, so why did you help me? Well, um, I knew it wasn't yours either. I saw Sarah throw it at you. Sarah? Yeah, she was behind breaking her glasses too. She pushed me? But why? It, it was me. I'm sorry. She did that because she knows I like you. What? Did I mishear him? Eden just said that he likes... Me? Lisa, I like you. I have for a long time. Um, do you want to go out with me sometime? There was an awkward pause as I soaked up his words. He really likes... Me? Oh, wow. This was bonkers. I gave this huge smile. Then I nodded at him and spluttered out, Yeah, I'd like that. So, after that, we started dating. But this didn't go too well with Sarah. One afternoon, I was walking across the schoolyard when Sarah appeared and shot me this dirty look, which I ignored. Suddenly, she pushed my shoulder, sneered, and then left. I quickly straightened myself up, then shouted after her, Hey, Sarah! I never got a chance to thank you. Sarah immediately turned around and gave me a puzzled look. You know, for getting Eden and me together. Sincerely, thank you, our matchmaker. Then I smiled and left. I'm pretty sure that she was still standing there at me with fiery eyes. But hey, she pranked me first, right? Oh well, karma. Anyway, I just want to let you all know that if you like someone, then don't put yourself down. Instead, be confident and brave enough to tell them how you feel. Because not everyone is lucky enough to have an expert matchmaker like Sarah around to help. (laughs) Have you ever wondered what being a parent would be like? How about if you suddenly became a parent? and your parent became a teenager. Well, it happened to me, and I'm here to tell you all about it. Hello, everybody. My name's Heaven, and I'm 17. But don't let my name deceive you, because this Heaven came straight out of hell. I suppose I've never been the easiest child. Back when I was younger, I had a lot of temper tantrums and outbursts. Once, when I was eight, this boy took the green crayon I wanted, so I snatched it off him, then snapped it in half. He burst into tears, and the teacher got involved and tried to put me in the timeout corner, so I screamed at her and even gave her some bruises. The teacher rang my parents and told them this was the last strike, and I'd been expelled. When they picked me up, my dad just sighed and stayed quiet, but my mom yelled at me. Well, I hope you're happy now, heaven. You've brought shame to our family, and now we've got to find another school willing to take you. Now, nine years later, and the relationship between mom and me is worse than ever. We just don't see eye to eye on anything. To be honest, we're like strangers. She has absolutely no idea what it feels like to be a teenager, and her super strict rules are ridiculous. Such as, no boyfriends until I'm 18. No parties, no drinking, no staying out past 8.30 p.m., no unhealthy foods. No, 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 no. She was such a fun killer. Jeez, who was she to try and control me like this? Ugh. Me being me, I tried to find my way around these stupid rules. 
I made out I was having a girly sleepover at my friend Clara's house, then ended up going to a party. I said I was at an after-school club, when really, I went on a date with a boy, and I chucked the healthy packed lunches she made me in the trash and ordered a greasy burger and loaded cheese fries instead. I hated the fact that mom was ruining my life with all of her dumb rules, and she hated the fact that I didn't respect her enough to follow her dumb rules. Because of this, we argued. A lot. And my little bro John and my dad often found themselves stuck in the middle. I guess that they couldn't stand the icy atmosphere between us. So eventually, they themselves prepared for a family day out. And it was certainly going to fix nothing. Her rules still followed us to the park, and she'd even stopped me talking to this really cute guy and shouted at me to go mind John. Ugh! I wasn't here to be a maid! Then when we got home, she insisted I help her cook dinner. So I poured dad a beer, and when I thought mom wasn't looking, I slurped back the rest of the can. Suddenly, my mom screamed out, What do you think you're doing? You're too young to be drinking! I just rolled my eyes and said, What? It was a tiny sip. Stop being so uptight, else you'll turn into a wrinkly old prune. Then I threw the can on the floor and walked off. She gave me a fierce glare, but I didn't care. How could she be just so serious? So when we were all sitting around the table for dinner, I could feel the tension between me and mom. She passed John a plate full of chicken nuggets, but she passed me a plate heaped full of broccoli. Yuck! Um, where are my nuggets? I asked. Mom replied, John is a growing boy. You, however, need to eat some vegetables, as you're getting a little chubby. How dare she? I wasn't even fat! In fact, I'm so skinny, I could be a model. If anyone needed to watch their weight, it was her, not me. She was the one squeezing herself into her old pair of skinny jeans. So I grabbed my plate of broccoli and threw it in the trash. Mom got up and said, Fine, go hungry, see if I care and you can clean up after yourself from now on. I yelled back, Ridiculous! There's nothing in my stomach and you're giving me chores? Is this child abuse? But then my dad startled us by slamming his fist on the table. That's enough! Both of you, start acting like grown-ups! We both muttered out sorry. Then dad came up with his bonkers idea. Okay, so if you two cannot live in harmony, why don't you trade places? Mom and I were kind of confused. What do you mean? I said to him. Well, it's simple. Heaven, you'll switch places with Mom and do the housework, shopping, making dinner, and taking care of John, and so on. While Ariana, he looked at Mom, you'll relive your teenage years and go to school. Let's say, for two days. Mom looked thrilled at the prospect of being me. As for me... I wasn't convinced. I mean, who likes doing chores? Besides, tomorrow at school was class picnic day, which meant no classes, lots of tasty food, and plenty of time to stare at cute boys. But mom seemed so excited at the idea of being me, so I decided I could take advantage of this. Does this mean I don't have to follow any stupid rules? I asked, and mom and dad nodded in agreement. Okay then, all the strict rules are gone. Does this mean I can eat chocolate in bed? John asked. I grinned. You betcha! Mom just shrugged and said, It's okay, Mom. Now I have to prepare stuff for my picnic. And she excitedly ran upstairs. This would be a breeze. Right? I mean, how hard could being Mom actually be? The next morning, John woke me up extra early and insisted I make him breakfast. Yawn. While I was pouring cereal into a bowl for him, Mom appeared. She was wearing her hat backwards. Jeez, someone seriously needed to tell her it wasn't the 90s anymore. Have fun, Ariana. I winked at her. You too, Mom. She winked back. I watched her through the window. As she got on the school bus, she turned to me and did the peace out sign. Jeez, could she be any more uncool? Whatever. She could be as cringy as she wanted. I didn't care, as I had the whole day at home alone. Or at least, until I had to pick up my bro from school. 
I didn't bother loading up the dishwasher, and I sidestepped past the massive pile of laundry and decided to spend the morning on the couch watching a chick flick and painting my nails. Ah, this was the life. A few hours passed, and I was so bored and hungry, so I went into the kitchen to look for food. But the cupboards were empty. Then I noticed a shopping list and some money on the counter. Reluctantly, I walked to the local store, but I ignored the list and bought lots of snacks. Hey, I was mum, so I made the rules. In the end, I found myself so bored that I actually ended up doing the laundry. I didn't really know what I was doing, so I threw everything into the machine, fiddled with the dial, and hoped for the best. Then my phone rang. It was Clara. So I answered and she said, Hey, why is your mom here instead of you? I told her about the switch up, then asked her what my mom was up to. She was quiet for a second, then said, Um, well, she's definitely enjoying the picnic. In fact, she's showing Mrs. Puller her dabbing skills. What? My mom was dabbing, which no one did anymore. And in front of our ancient science teacher? Was she trying to humiliate me? Whatever, my mom could get on with it. I had house chores to do. Jeez, what's with chores? They seriously never seem to end. By the end of the day, I was so exhausted that I ordered takeout for everyone, then slumped in front of the TV. I finally had the option to stay out late, but I didn't have the energy to do it. Then, the next day, when I was doing yet more house chores, my friend Patrick sent me a photo. It was mom. She was wearing a cheerleader's outfit that exposed her midriff. What? She was just at a casual football match. No one dressed up for that. Then Patrick sent me another picture. In it, mom was fiddling with her hair and touching some jock's shoulder. O-M-G. Was she trying to flirt with him? Whatever. I didn't have time for this. I had to go pick John up from school, then go to the grocery store to get supplies for dinner. We arrived home to find mom slumped on the couch, surrounded by empty wrappers and cans. On seeing me, she said, Oh, you're back. I told John to go to his room, then I stormed over to mom and said, What's with all this mess? Clean it up! She just smirked at me and said, Nah, you never clean it up, so why should I? After all, we have switched places, remember? She finished her beer, then burped loudly before she threw the can at my feet, then walked off. This was so annoying. I'd already tidied the living room once today, and now I had to do it again. My mom was so unfair. Then, when I finally managed to grab five minutes to relax with a hot chocolate, loud thudding sounds were coming from upstairs. It was her music. It was so loud, it made the ceiling shake. Jeez. She was so annoying. Then suddenly, it dawned on me. This was how I acted. Mom was just being me. So, okay, I guess I was a little harsh at times. I suppose being mom wasn't as easy as it looks. So I decided to make amends by making a delicious dinner. But there was one problem. I can't cook. In fact, the last time I tried to cook... I set the crepes and the pan on fire. So, for safety purposes, I asked Clara and Patrick to help me. They had cooking class, so they knew what to do. We created a feast of barbecue ribs, burgers, cornbread, salad, grape punch, and for dessert, a chocolate lava cake and blueberry pie. I swear they looked so good, I wanted to drool all over them. Mom came downstairs chewing her gum and scrolling through her phone. But then she looked at the food and stuttered, Huh, huh, how did you make all of this? Not even I could make this many meals. I just shrugged and said, I had a little help from my friends. No biggie. Then I stopped in front of mom and said, I'm sorry that I've been a bad daughter. I know you do a lot for me, and I promise I'll be better from now on. Mom started crying and said, I'm sorry too. I know it isn't easy being your age. I can't keep up with the trends. I thought dabbing was popular. Anyway, from now on, I'll be fair to you, and we'll have fun together. After that, we hugged it out. Then my dad stood up and said, Well, now anyone want to trade places with me?
John immediately raised his hand, and all could see his eyes light up. Soon, we all burst out laughing, thinking about one day John will go to work and talk about dinosaurs at the meetings. Meanwhile, my dad is building a Lego castle for John's kindergarten girlfriend. My family is now happier than ever. It's all thanks to my dad's crazy idea. You should never disrespect your parents. Otherwise, you might just find yourself living in their shoes. Literally. And trust me, I'll take strict rules and being nagging parents any day if the alternative is grocery shopping and house chores. Ugh. So everyone loves Christmas, right? Trust me, it's not so great when your boss fires you in November. How was I supposed to buy presents now? Still, I tried to see the positives. I hated that boring, underpaid, overworked job anyway. My ex-boss Adrian was the worst. He's a crazy perfectionist who always gave me ridiculous deadlines, complained about every tiniest mistake, and flipped out if things didn't go his way. No wonder he was still single at 32. Who could ever stand him? I wouldn't miss him, or my tragic ass-kissing co-workers. Anyways, on the bright side, I'd get to spend the entire holiday season with my family and my boyfriend Mac in peace, without being bothered by any annoying work emails. I, in fact, have invited Matt over for Thanksgiving dinner with my parents, and plan to spend this cozy weekend with my loved ones. Then, the day before Thanksgiving, I packed up my car and was about to go and pick Matt up when my phone beeped. Sonia. I don't think Thanksgiving is a good idea. I just think we need some time apart. Hope you have a great time. See you around, X. What? Had he just broken up with me over text message? I immediately rang him up, but he turned his phone off. Just great. Here I was, stuck at home for the entire Thanksgiving and Christmas period, being a jobless, boyfriendless loser. To make it worse, even my little sister Gina had a boyfriend who adored her. This is so unfair. One night, my parents were out to buy a Christmas tree, and Gina had her boyfriend over to help put up Christmas lights and decorations. Well, needless to say, love was in the air, and that festive vibe didn't help at all with my misery. So I refused to join them and curled up in my room. Feeling so lonely and miserable, I downloaded Tinder. I usually wasn't one for dating apps, but I was feeling so low, I would have happily spoken to anyone. I didn't feel like being me. I was sick of being me, so I used the fake name Crystal and just put some artsy scenery pictures up. I could be whoever I wanted to be. And you know what? It seemed to be working, as a few guys wanted to talk to me. Okay, most of them were also bored, or only after one thing, but then there's this guy called Carl that caught my attention. Like me, he had no pictures of himself, but instead, he had images of song lyrics and movie quotes, including the quote, The more you know who you are and what you want, the less you let things upset you. I love the movie Lost in Translation, so I sent him a message telling him he had good taste in films, and he messaged me back complimenting the scenery photos I took. After that, we started chatting days and nights. We talked about everything, from the dumb to the meaningful. He actually helped me out a lot and made the Christmas period bearable for me. It was all going great, until Christmas Eve. He sent me a message to wish me a Merry Christmas, along with, let's meet up for a drink. Oh no. Even though the app said he was only a few miles away, I wasn't ready for meetups. I actually was nervous upon reading his text. My heart was pounding, and I found myself worrying about what he would think of me when we met. What if he didn't look like what I imagined? What if he'd be disappointed when he saw me? Why does that even matter, though? Unless... I developed feelings for him. I don't even know anymore. But it's certain that I couldn't face him just yet. I politely refused his invitation. He was cool about it. Then we still continued to talk like normal. I survived Christmas. And then for New Year's Eve, Gina persuaded me to go to a party with her boyfriend and friends. I wasn't really keen to join, but I guessed I needed to do something to stop this gloominess. As I was walking in, I was so busy brushing off the snow on my shoulder that I bumped into a guy. To my horror, I looked up and saw that it was my old boss, Adrian. Why was he here, in my hometown? He was also shocked, but managed to smile at me. But I just gave him a glare, rolled my eyes, flipped back my hair, then strode off. What a mood killer. I grabbed a drink and sat in the corner in an attempt to avoid bumping into Adrian again. Gina found me and tried dragging me onto the dance floor, but 
I refused. Then she winked at me and in a tipsy voice said, You need a man to dance with. I'll be right back. Five minutes later, she excitedly waved at me and shouted over, Found one! I just want to facepalm as I saw her dragging Adrian by the hand over to me. Talk about awkward. But still, I mumbled out a hi, downed a shot for courage, and then chatted to him. Okay, it turns out he was visiting his grandparents who lived around here, and he was actually an okay guy to talk to. After I spent most of the night talking to him, he bought a drink, then said to me, I have to admit that after the death stare you gave me on entry, I was afraid for my life. But it turns out, I've enjoyed chatting with you. Sorry, I blushed. No, it's okay. I'd be mad with me too if I were you. Letting you go from work was nothing personal. I had to let one person go, and I only chose you because I knew you were wasted there. Um, thanks, I guess, I laughed. Let's get another shot. Okay, so maybe Adrian wasn't that bad of a person after all. And I don't know if it's because of all the drinks we downed, the atmosphere, or the fact that everyone else around us was sharing New Year's kisses, that I almost felt like Adrian looked like he wanted to kiss me on the strike of midnight too. And I too didn't dodge it. Luckily, nothing happened. I mean, that would have been weird, right? The next day, Adrian messaged me, saying he would help me set up a job interview at a big media company. Wow, that's amazing! Now I had no excuse to sulk around anymore. I needed to get back to the city and sort my life out. Only, I still couldn't get Carl out of my head. I guessed these feelings were real. To clear up my mind, I decided to confess to him online. But then he messaged me back saying, I think you're great and I love talking to you, but I have a crush on my coworker. I'm sorry, but I'd like to stay friends. Ouch! Rejection hurt! Back in the city, I felt lonelier than ever. Yes, I'd got the new job and it was going well, but I was sick of seeing loved up couples everywhere. To make it worse, Gina came to stay with me for a while and she's always on the phone, giggling and FaceTiming her boyfriend. Now I couldn't even escape lovebirds in my own apartment. Feeling down, I messaged Carl again, just casually asked him to meet up later this weekend when I would be back home again for my mom's birthday. Well, to be honest, I just couldn't give him up just yet. Maybe he would change his mind when we met, or I would be able to get over him once we meet. But he made up some excuse to reject me again. That was it, I told myself. It's official over now. Depressed, I called Adrian up for a drink. He arrived looking kinda cute, but the sting of rejection was still on my mind. I confided to Adrian, and I asked him if he thought Carl was a fool for turning me down. Adrian slammed his drink onto the table and turned to me and said, You're the fool. Why are you stupidly chasing after some guy online? He might not even be real. He might be some 60-year-old pervert. Why won't you just open your eyes and look in front of you? Then he stood up, locked me in his arms, and tried to kiss me. What? I was so mad I pulled myself away from him and slapped him straight across the face before I stomped off. He was meant to be my friend, not some guy after just one thing. I was so hurt, I cried while texting Carl about what just happened, but he didn't reply. The next day, I woke up with a pounding head and puffy eyes. I checked my phone. Adrian had called me, but nothing from Carl. He must have been too busy with his coworker, huh? Suddenly, I heard the door knock. My sister answered it and told me it was Adrian. I reluctantly went out to see him. I mean, I guess I needed to at least hear him out. He was standing there looking sheepish as he said, I'm so sorry about last night, Sonia. I was slightly drunk and I guess I've read the signals wrong. For what it's worth, I think that Carl guy is a fool for letting you go. You're amazing. I wasn't in the mood to talk to him, so said it was fine, then told him to leave. I closed the door and threw myself on the sofa. Then about ten minutes later, there was someone at the door again. I answered it, and there was Adrian, but this time, he changed his outfit. Confused, I grumbled, what else do you want? Then, he politely greeted me. Hello, Crystal. Let me introduce myself. I'm Carl. We've been talking for months. I guess, if you think about it, the more you know who you are, and what you want, the less you let things upset you. I stared at him open-mouthed. He just quoted Lost in Translation, and he'd called me Crystal. Then reality struck me. OMG! All this time? And Adrian was Carl? I dragged him inside. We sat down on the sofa and talked everything out. It's so unreal! 
turns out the guy I've been chasing after is literally right in front of me. How ironic! I was so happy I hugged him and broke down crying, apologizing. Right then, my sister walked out from the kitchen, took one look at us, and laughed out, Well, 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 isn't this the awful boss who fired you? But most importantly, isn't he the guy I brought to you at the New Year's Eve party? You two owe me big time. We all burst out laughing. So, yeah, after a horrid holiday season, now I finally could start a promising new year with a great job and a pretty awesome new boyfriend. I guess things always have a way of working out in the end, right? Thank you for listening to my story, and wish you guys a good start into the new year! Hi everyone, I'm Emma and this is my story about what can happen when someone gets so jealous of you, they try to ruin your life. It all started with my mom. She's a beautiful woman and I took after her. So when she divorced my dad and we moved to a new town, obviously I started a new school. That's when the trouble began. I became popular very quickly, but not with the girls. It was the boys who went wild for me and it drove me crazy. I just wanted a normal life with some nice friends and it wasn't my fault my mom had passed her beauty down to me. Anyway, there was one girl in particular called Anna who was having none of it. She was also pretty, but she was seriously jealous of me from day one. I remember that first week hearing some girls whispering in the bathroom that I was prettier than Anna. And then Anna walked in and she looked like she wanted to scream. After that, she went out of her way to destroy my life. At my old school, I'd been a cheerleader, so I signed up to join at this new school. Little did I know, Anna was head cheerleader. She pretended to be all nice to me at practice. Then at the first football game we were performing and going through our routine which Anna had choreographed, she made me go at the top of the pyramid, balancing on top of everyone. I was so nervous, but I knew I could do it. Anyway, as I was climbing up there, I suddenly saw Anna whisper to the girl next to her and then she moved and the whole pyramid started to fall. She obviously wanted to hurt me but it backfired and we all fell on top of her. All we heard was a scream as her arm snapped. Afterwards she told everyone I was clumsy and it was all my fault but I knew she'd planned it so I'd be the one to get hurt. And that's not all. Prom was coming up and my mom had made me the most beautiful long silk dress. I felt like a princess and couldn't wait to see what everyone would think. Of course, Anna was also wearing a beautiful dress, but everyone was staring at me. I saw her roll her eyes, and then when I was dancing with two of my friends, I felt something rip. I looked behind me, and Anna was standing on my dress. I couldn't believe it. I tried to move, but she wouldn't budge, and it wouldn't stop ripping. Suddenly, I was standing there with a mini dress, and I wanted to cry. But then my friend quickly got some scissors and kneaded it up. And believe it or not, it actually looked even cooler than before. <laughs> Once again, Anna tried to make me look like a fool, but it all fell on her. Everyone was so impressed with my dress and I even started a new trend wearing mini dresses to prom. However, despite all these silly pranks, there was one thing that Anna had that I didn't. A boyfriend. She was dating Isaac, one of the top athletes in school, and anytime she was with him and saw me, she would always smirk and look me up and down as if to say she had a boyfriend and I didn't. I didn't care for her silly competitiveness though. I wasn't even bothered about being single, all I wanted was for her to leave me alone. Pretty soon, we became like enemies. I just couldn't stand her and her annoying behaviors, but then things got worse. One weekend, my mom drove me to a game and insisted on staying to watch my cheerleading performance. Later, I spotted her chatting with some men and she looked like she was having a good time. I was happy to see her smile that brightly after a long time. And as expected, not long after that, she introduced him to me, but you won't believe who it was. It turned out he was Anna's dad out of all people on earth. And worse still, they were now hopelessly in love and even wanted to get married. Oh no! 
If I knew who he was, I would have broken them up from the start. I couldn't be Anna's stepsister. This was my worst nightmare. And when Anna found out about this, she started to treat me even worse. One time, I was walking in the canteen when suddenly someone pushed me. I went flying and ended up bumping into a boy who fell over too. It was so sore, but the pain quickly disappeared when I realized who the boy was. It was Liam, the new Hawkeye who just joined the athletes club. I kept apologizing to him, but he just laughed and said it was okay, then helped me get up and took me to the nurse's office to make sure I wasn't hurt. Afterwards, he even asked for my number. I couldn't believe it. I was actually blushing over a boy. Then, I went back to the canteen, and there was Anna, staring at me all angry. I didn't even have to think twice about who'd push me. Obviously, Anna. Well, thanks to her silly prank, now I had a cute guy interested in me. And for once, I was actually interested in him too. It didn't take long before we became a couple. And then we were pretty much attached at the hip. I also joined his athlete's practice. And because Isaac was there too, Anna was always there as well. She just glared at me with dagger eyes whenever she saw me. I didn't get what her problem was. Anyway, one time, the athletes club suggested we all go see a movie, with girlfriends included. In the theater, Anna sat behind me and kept kicking my chair. I turned over and asked her to stop, but she wouldn't. I could feel the anger welling up inside me and I thought I was going to explode, but I didn't want to embarrass myself in front of Liam. So, I decided I needed to stay as far away from Anna as possible. That wasn't easy though. Our school had organized a big athletes competition with another school and so Liam was always practicing. I always sat in the stands and watched him and on the day of the competition Anna came and sat next to me. I almost froze. What was she up to? Instead of pulling some prank she handed me a bottle of water and said hey Emma I don't want to be your enemy anymore. We're basically going to be sisters so let's just make up okay? Then she turned to me and smiled shyly. Whoa, well, that was a surprise. I felt relieved though and said, I thought this day would never come. I hated things being all awkward between us. Anna just smiled at me again. And then we came down to the field where Isaac and Liam were warming up for the race to wish them luck. Finally, the competition began. Anna and I sat together, cheering our boyfriends on. As expected, Liam won first prize and Isaac came in second. I was so happy for Liam and ran out to the field to hug him. But suddenly, some of the organizers approached him and escorted him off the field. I had no idea what was going on, but I saw Anna smirking at me and then walking away. What was that for? After a while, the organizers came back and said Liam had been caught doping. So now the first prize would go to Isaac. What? There was no way Liam would do something illegal like that. He'd never used any kind of substance to perform well. He was just naturally talented. Everyone started saying mean things about Liam and I couldn't bear it. So I went to find him. I saw him sitting in the corner of the locker room looking shocked. When he saw me, he shook his head and said, I didn't use doping. You have to believe me, Emma. I'm not that kind of guy. All I did was drink the water you gave me. Oh my god, the water bottle! Anna had given it to me, and I must have passed it on to Liam to hydrate before the competition. I thought she was being nice, but of course she wasn't. This was Anna we were talking about. She'd planned this. She was seriously too much. I ran to find her, and I was raging. She was happily talking to the other athletes, so I grabbed her wrist and pulled her away. How could you? Are you trying to ruin Liam's life? I yelled at her. Anna wasn't even bothered. She just smirked and said, Yup, I am, and so what? I was shaking by that point, and I said, You're crazy. Why did you do it? What has Liam ever done to you? I did it because I hate you. You stole everything from me, including Liam. Huh? I was so confused. Since when did Anna like Liam? Well, Isaac appeared at the exact moment, and he obviously heard what she said. He started shouting, you told me you did that to help me win, but no, you're a complete liar. So you're just jealous of Emma, huh? Okay then, now you can run after Liam as you wish. We're over. 
Anna was shocked and tried to explain that she'd done it for him, that he was misunderstanding her, but he wouldn't even look at her. He said, You won't get away with this, Anna. I'm gonna tell the organizers right now. Anna tried to get him to stop, but he pushed her away, and she ended up falling onto the ground where she burst in tears. Ha! She deserved it. I went back to find Liam and the organizers announced that there were some problems with the results and that the competition would be repeated the following weekend. Liam looked so happy and hugged me. Everything worked out in the end. Well, at least for Liam and me. Liam still won first place and now he's going to compete in the international competition. As for Anna and Isaac, well, they broke up and Anna moved to another city with her mom and Isaac got kicked out of the athletes club. On another note, my mom and Anna's dad are getting married soon, and even though I can't stand Anna, I'm still going to go because it'll mean a lot to my mom. At least I don't need to live in the same house as Anna. She's gotta be the most jealous person I've ever met, and it's not done her any good. Envy really is poison. It's much better to just be happy with what you have right now, right? I was sitting in the reception with an ice pack pressed to my head, waiting for my mom to come pick me up. Ugh, that stupid rogue ball during P.E. Oh, there she was, glamorous as always. She rushed over and hugged me, checking if I was okay. Then she guided me out of there and along the hallway. A group of teenage boys stopped dead and stared open-mouthed as we walked by. One even wolf whistled. Even my math teacher, who was walking out of his classroom, started readjusting his tie and waved over at us. No, those reactions weren't for me. They were for my mom. She's just too beautiful to ever be faced by how men act around her. On the way back home, I got a message from my bestie, Minnie. I bet men would all compete to win a date with your mom. She was like a goddess earlier. I giggled to myself. The thought of a bunch of adult men competing to win my mom's affection amused me. I couldn't understand why my mom was still single. She's gorgeous, successful, and a really kind person. And I guessed she'd enjoy having a man about the place, right? Okay, so Minnie wasn't being serious, but the more I pondered on it, the better the idea became. So I messaged her back. Tell me more about that contest idea of yours. Then one time, when my mom was away on a business trip, I invited Minnie around. We spent all evening posting about the auditions online and handing flyers out around town. Soon, the applications came flooding in. Oh boy, some were handsome, but some, yeah, they were so not. Um, delete, definitely. We got everything ready to spend hours sifting through all the applicants. Gotta be strict because the chosen one had to be perfect like Prince Paris to match with a woman like my mom, whose name is actually Helen. <laughs> Finally, we whittled them down to a top 10 list, and we invited them along to round one. Fitness is important, right? Well, at least that's what Minnie says. So we set up an assault course at the local park. All the guys showed up, including Mr. Swanson, my gym teacher. Uh-oh, awkward. But hey, I suppose he was good-looking, and a physically strong man. Firstly, they had to run a complete lap of the field, as stamina was important. Then they had to lift 120 pounds of weights, equal to my mom's weight. She sure needed a man who could lift her over their shoulder like they do in the movies. OMG, watching them warming up was hilarious. One man showed up in this lycra one-piece, and started doing jumping jacks, and another guy was doing some weird karate moves. All of them completed the running section. Well, just about. But some of them struggled to lift the weights, including Mr. Swanson, who had turned bright red and was groaning. Minnie and I covered our mouths to hold back our laughs. Farewell, Mr. Swanson. That was for being mean to us in gym class. Finishing round one, we eliminated three men. Too bad as they were handsome. On to round two. It's not all about brawn. Brains are important too. That was why Minnie and I spent two days noting down all the questions for our who wants to be my mom's boyfriend quiz round. My mom deserves a man who knows everything. We set out a row of kid-sized chairs in the backyard. Then we walked along the line and fired questions at them. 
Suddenly, one man stood up and furiously said to the others, Why are we letting some kids test us like this? Then stormed off. Minnie whispered, Not surprising, really. I saw him scratching his head at the other questions. We then eliminated those with the lowest score, leaving just five potentials to go through to round three. That night, I was about to grab something to eat, and I saw my mom standing in the kitchen. Hmm, she was back earlier than I thought. She was looking down at the pile of profiles on the table with in and out stamps on them. Confused, she asked me, Zara, what is the meaning of this? Mom, we think you've been lonely for a long time, so Minnie and I are doing a contest to find you a man. I gave my best puppy-eyed look. Actually, tomorrow is round three. It'd be perfect if you could join us for the interview. Please? Mom glared at me and shook her head. But I kept insisting until she sighed and said, Fine, I'll come. I howled with joy and hugged her. Bring on round three, the interview stage. Minnie and I asked the questions while Mom, Queen Helen, watched from her throne. The first one, Tyler, waved over at Mom and said, Helen, do you recognize me? My mom just smiled politely. Turned out, Tyler had a big crush on my mom since they were both in high school. Then when Minnie asked him to show us his talent, he ignored her and said to mom, Oh, Helen, I've never stopped loving you. You remember back then when we... I shouted out, interrupting him. Not impressive enough. Next! The second one stepped in. Simon. Ooh. He was wearing a suit and seemed like a gentleman. Maybe you don't recognize me, Simon spoke up. My mom's smile disappeared. I'm Simon, the head of the engineering department in our company. Simon must have had a crush on my mom for a long time, but she sure didn't even know he existed. His talent performance was to help fix two faulty computers in my house. Hmm, useful, but honestly, it wasn't rocking enough. Plus, him being my mom's colleague was awkward. Duh! As soon as the third one, James, walked in, Mum sat up with a surprise. Helen, I miss you so much, he sincerely said. Mom immediately motioned me to eliminate him, then got up and went inside. It was revealed that James was her ex-boyfriend from their college days. Okay, creep. Oh well, two guys left. The next one was so dreamy. He looked like he belonged in a boy band. Minnie and I clasped hands excitedly. Hi, I'm Daniel. Nice to meet you, ladies. Daniel's smile totally melted Minnie and I. I don't know if you ladies know, but I live on this street. Seriously? How did I not know a handsome neighbor like this? He then took out his guitar and played a song. OMG, this guy deserves straight A's. But he was only 21 years old. That was way younger than my mom. And he was the last one of all. Very handsome and sweet. For his talent, he'd make us cupcakes. These lovely little ones are specially made for you, lovely ladies. He smiled. Oh, oh, how charming. In the end, Minnie and I sat together and discussed our options. Well, the result was quite obvious. I excitedly announced, We've made our decision. My new daddy, the chosen Prince Paris to my mom, Helen, the champion is... Andy! He looked chuffed and grinned over at my mom. Still, my mom maintained that polite smile and remained silent. Yay! This was great! I finally had a father. Moreover, this one makes awesome food. I couldn't wait for their first date. Eek! Now let me tell you, the date went amazingly. Andy took my mom and I to this fancy restaurant in town. He pulled the chairs out for us, ordered food he thought we'd like, Then he started serving us the coolest stories ever. He really is a gentleman. If I had a boyfriend, I would want one like him. After we finished, I crossed the street to buy ice cream and caught them hugging. Perfect. Looked like things went well. Oh, Andy, I could already imagine the life where he was family. That night, Mom sat down next to me while I was texting and watching TV. Zara, I'm glad to see you had fun these past few days. I hummed, still texting. But did it ever cross your mind that what you did was for you and not for me? Excuse me? I worked hard to make her happy, 
and she could say that to me? I took my eyes off the phone and stared at her. Sweetie, you only picked the man you liked the best. It's your choice, not mine. I appreciate what you did, but relationships are not that simple. I tearfully raised my phone and shook it, saying that I already invited Andy over at the weekend to teach me how to cook. Mom smiled. No problem. Andy and I already talked and decided to stay friends. So, this weekend's plan remains the same. I lowered my head and apologized to her. Mom was right. I'd picked my favorite without considering her feelings. But, yeah, it wasn't all bad, as after that, Andy kept coming over most weekends, took me to go buy groceries with him, and then cooked for us. He taught me how to cook and bake, and we even chatted about the goofy boys at my school. Seriously, if that Richard wants a chance with a pretty girl like ours, Zara, then he should be stronger, Andy said, while his hands were still cooking gracefully. Yeah, Richard! Burn! Speaking of being burnt, ouch! Yes, it was me who had just burnt myself in the oven thinking about all this. Andy rushed over, guided my hand over to the faucet, and ran it under cold water. Oh, jeez, he was so caring and thoughtful. Unlike those childish guys my age, soon it was my sweet 16th, and of course, Andy was the chef for dinner. Mum and Minnie just had to light up the birthday candles. Then, as I watched Andy through the candlelight, I knew I couldn't lie to myself anymore. I was in love with him. I spent days planning for the best confession to him. Only, before I could tell him how I felt, Mum told me, Andy just called me and said he'd been offered the head chef job in New York. He's leaving next week. What? No! Why? It was Andy, the first love of my life. That was so unfair. We didn't get any chance to see him until the day he boarded. Mom and I went to the airport to see him off. I couldn't bear watching him go, so I glued my eyes on the floor while he was still excitedly chatting with my mom. Zara? Use what I taught you to take good care of your mother, okay? Andy winked and patted my head. I couldn't help myself any longer. I burst into tears, hugged him, and sobbed out, Andy, I love you. Please don't go. Don't leave me. I can't live without you. For a moment, the whole airport, including my mom, was stunned. All eyes were on me. Andy immediately pushed me away clearing his throat and said, <clears throat> Zora, you're a lovely, pretty, sweet girl. You will find a suitable boyfriend. Then he turned to Mom. Best wishes to you both. Bye, Helen. Bye, Zara. And I watched him walk away with tears streaming down on my face. Well, it's been six months since then, and I eventually realized that my feelings for Andy were just a teenage confusion. I did love him. Yes, but it was more like admiring and respecting him as a father figure. Anyway, I do have a new dad now, but it was my beloved mum's choice. His name is Harris, and he might not be as good a cook as Andy, but he's a nice guy. Andy makes her happy, and of course, we still keep in touch with Andy. Both his career and his love life are doing really well in the Big Apple. I've learned my lesson. Life's full of choices. Some good and some not so good. But sometimes, however much we want to, we can't make choices for other people. Instead, we just have to take a deep breath and let them make their own. High school has started, and it's going pretty well. I'm currently seeing this very cute guy in math class. Guys my age are not that bad, to be honest. Minnie's not so bad on herself, either, as she's now dating that musician Daniel and enjoys touring around with him whenever he plays at concerts. What a happily fulfilled ending for everyone, isn't it? Hi guys, I'm Chrissy, and my high school life took a drastic turn thanks to my crazy, overprotective mom. You see, my parents divorced when I was a little kid. I stayed with my mom, but she worked for the criminal investigation department, which meant she was super busy, so the house chores remained undone, and we lived off takeaways. Trust me, having pizza and egg fried rice every night 
isn't as good as it sounds. My grandparents could see that my mom was struggling to juggle her work and home life commitments, so I went to stay with them. I didn't mind this, as mom always visited me on weekends. Besides, grandma's meals are delicious. But then, mom switched departments. She went from chasing criminals to handling paperwork at the station. Due to these changes in circumstances, she had far more time on her hands, so I moved back in with her. It's only by living with her that I realized just how different she is to me. Talk about my opposite, as she's strong, fierce, and impulsive. Basically, she's like a man, while I'm a sweet girly girl who loves wearing pretty clothes and watching cute movies. You can imagine my horror when I invited my bestie, Sharon, over, and mom was walking around the house in a skull print tank top, ripped jeans, and biker boots. She looked like she was going on a bike rally. Yeah, this was just her usual style, but I was expecting she would at least act normal for once when we had a guest around. It was so cringe. She was almost 40, not 15. Then, on my first day of high school, mom insisted she take me there and pick me up, as she was worried there might be troublemakers on the bus. Yep, I know, this was ridiculous. I mean, how delicate does she think I am? But I didn't want to upset her, so I reluctantly agreed. School's out and I was chatting with my friends while waiting for my mom to show up when we suddenly heard the sound of a motorbike engine coming toward the school. Me and my friends got excited and whistled as we thought a cute guy was passing by. But then they stopped near us and took off their helmet. I literally wanted to faint. It was my beloved mother. Oh, sweet Jesus, what on earth was she doing? My mom shouted with joy. Hey, Chrissy, get on. Then she held a spare helmet out to me. I swear it was like the whole school was outside watching us. How embarrassing. When we arrived home, I asked her where the bike had come from. She replied, What? Oh, you mean Eleanor? I just bought her last week. The weather is so nice today, so I thought I would bring her along. Yes, you heard her right. My mom named the bike after Eleanor Roosevelt. Unbelievable. The embarrassment didn't end there. Oh, no. One day, my teacher informed us that tomorrow after school was a parent-teacher conference. I couldn't have mom turning up in a teenage rebel outfit, so I searched her closet for something mom-like. Nope. All my mom owned were t-shirts, ripped shorts, and crop tops. Ugh! So I went online and found this beautiful blue dress, then I told her to buy it. The next day after school, I waited for mom in my form room. All the parents were already there. Only my mom was missing. I was about to call her when suddenly somebody walked into the room. Oh. My. God. Someone, please knock me out right now. It was my mom, and you wouldn't believe what she was wearing. No, it wasn't the blue dress. Instead, it was this super skinny black leather dress, black sunglasses, 10-inch high heels, and a black choker necklace. She looked like she belonged in a vampire movie. Everyone was gawping at her. I think some of the dads were even drooling a bit. When I confronted her about it, she just shrugged and said, Sweetie, this dress is much more my style than that mumsy blue one. Now this was officially my number one most embarrassing moment ever. Thanks, Mom. Why couldn't she be like me? I mean, I was starting to think that I was the adult here, not her. The embarrassment didn't end there. Instead, she took it to a whole new level. My school was planning a camping trip, and I was so excited about it. Mom wanted to come along and supervise, but I firmly said no. She started saying, but honey, you don't know how dangerous the woods are. What if you got bitten by a snake? Do you know how to handle that? I don't think so. What? She was just being ridiculous again. We argued for a while, but in the end, she agreed to let me go without her. The trip was so much fun, and some cute boys asked Sharon and me if we wanted to go for a swim in the lake. Of course, we said yes. I mean, look at them. They were so cute. Suddenly, I heard screaming. It was Sharon. She said someone was hiding in the bushes and watching us. That was so creepy. The cute boys said they'd go and check it out, but then this person jumped out of the bush and did a judo throw on them. Wait a minute, 
I know that move. Could it be? Oh, no. It was my mom. What was she wearing? She was in full army gear. She even had binoculars. Jeez, Mom, what were you doing looking like a G.I. Joe? I couldn't hold my tears, and I cried out, Oh my god, why can't you leave me alone? You're ruining everything! Then I ran back to the camp. She left after that, but I felt so embarrassed for the rest of the trip. When I returned home, my mom immediately said sorry to me and swore that something like that would never happen again. Okay, I could see in her eyes that she really meant it. So... I would give her another chance. She calmed down a lot after that, and even let me go to school by myself. Well, that was big progress, don't you think? Soon after that, I started to date this boy named Kevin. And boy, was he hot! He was one of the popular kids at school, so I still couldn't believe he chose me. I don't know how Mom found out about him, but she did, and she insisted on inviting him over for dinner. I made her agree not to do anything crazy. I mean, what was the worst that could happen? The dinner was going well, until we got to dessert. Then mom started asking him awkward questions, like, Kevin, how many girls have you dated? And, I assume you two have health classes at school? Or should I remind you of some important facts? Oh, sweet Jesus, mom! Her questions were beyond embarrassing! Kevin just sat there with a super awkward smile on his face and didn't answer. But then mom announced it was very late and practically shoved him out of the house. Huh, it was only 8.30 p.m. After he left, I went straight to my mom and we started arguing. Mom, you agreed not to do anything crazy. Why can't you act like a normal mom? She replied, Oh, honey, that Kevin guy is really cute, but he's not good for you. I know his type. They only want to take advantage of girly girls like you. What? Girly girls like me? What was that supposed to mean? I shouted back. You're doing it again! You're being overprotective! That's because you're not tough enough! If you wouldn't be so girly and be a badass like your mom, I wouldn't have to protect you all the time. I stormed up to my room and slammed the door shut. I was so going to prove to her that she was wrong about Kevin and that I didn't need her protection. Fortunately, Mom hadn't scared Kevin off. Phew! He told me that his parents were super embarrassing too. One evening, Kevin took me to this nice restaurant. There were candles, live music, and the food was delicious. It was so romantic. Then he touched my hand and leaned in closer. This was so exciting. I was about to have my first kiss! Suddenly, someone banged on the table nearby and ruined the moment. That's when I noticed they had a keychain on their bag that looked exactly like the one I'd made once at summer camp. I stood up and walked toward the table. A middle-aged lady with blonde hair and sunglasses was sitting there. I tried to look at her face, but it was like she was avoiding me. I took a closer look, and I couldn't believe it. I ripped the wig off her head, and yes, it was my beloved mother, Again! To be honest, I didn't want to argue with her anymore. Today was proof that she just couldn't change. So I just said in a calm voice, I hate you, Mom. You're the worst mom ever. Then I grabbed Kevin's arm and ran out of there. Okay, maybe what I said was a bit harsh, but she just ruined what would have been my first kiss. I couldn't concentrate on our date after that, so I asked Kevin to take me home. But to my surprise, he drove me back to his place. Uh Uh-oh, I knew what that meant. But I wasn't ready for any of that yet, so I told him I'd get an Uber. Suddenly, he grabbed my arm and tried to drag me into his house. I couldn't believe this was actually happening. Mom was so right about him. I was freaking out. But then suddenly, I remembered something important that she taught me, so I used her signature judo move on him. It worked, as he laid on the ground and groaned out in pain. Ha! And that's when my mom arrived on her motorbike. As soon as I saw her, I ran over to her, hugged her tight, and cried like a baby in her arms. You must be wondering how my mom found me. Well, when Kevin came by to have dinner, she pickpocketed his phone and hacked it so she had access to all his messages and location. So 
After I dragged him out of the restaurant, he texted his friends saying he was trying to get in bed with me at all costs, which my mom saw, so she rushed to rescue me. Oh god, mom, that was so not okay. But what could you expect from a criminal investigator? When we arrived home, we had a serious talk. To my surprise, she admitted that she was wrong about me. She saw now that I was able to take care of myself. That judo move I did on Kevin really impressed her. See? Girly girls can kick some butt too. So, from that moment on, things between us improved lots. Turns out, my mom isn't so annoying after all. I realize now that she's pretty cool, and all the things she did were just to protect me. Okay, so maybe she took it to the extreme levels, but she did it with good intentions. Thanks to my mom, I feel stronger now. You know what they say, I'm a strong woman because a strong woman raised me. Although, one thing's for sure, I won't be borrowing her clothes anytime soon. Hi everyone. Have you ever had someone get revenge on you? It's not fun, right? Well, this is my story about revenge, but with a twist. You won't believe who my prankster turned out to be. Oh, let me introduce myself. I'm Audrey, and I'm 24. To say I've had an unhappy life would be an understatement. Firstly, my dad ditched my mom for another woman. And not long after that, my mom passed away from a serious illness. Basically, my entire life fell apart in a matter of months, and I was still too young at that time. It was tough growing up, and I always think that my life could never turn the page again. But on one fine day, someone popped into my life and changed everything. His name was Jim, and he was seven years older than me, and he seriously turned my life around. He lived in another city, but he often came to my city on business trips. We fell for each other quickly. That happiness didn't last long, though. One day I was working in the clothes store when a girl around the same age as me came in. She wanted my help to choose some dress, but she was pretty rude to me and I kept catching her staring at me with evil eyes. Who was she? And why was she treating me like that? Finally, after about two hours, she made up her mind and picked up only a tie that she wanted to buy for her husband instead. I was relieved to get rid of her, but shocked when I saw the name on her credit card. Jim Stewart. Her husband had the exact same name as my boyfriend. What a coincidence. She must have caught me staring at the card because she suddenly said, Yes, Jim is my husband. Now stay away from him. What? Her husband? My Jim. Before I even had a chance to react, she turned to everyone in the store and said, This girl is a gold digger and she's trying to break up my marriage. I was shocked. I tried to explain that it wasn't true, but she wouldn't listen to me. She just stormed out, and I was left standing there hearing people whispering about me. It was the most humiliating moment of my life. I immediately ran to the staff room and called Jim. I was really hoping it had all been a big misunderstanding, but I could tell from Jim's tone that it was the truth. He told me he'd lied to me, and that he actually lived in the same city. He just made up the business trip stuff so he wouldn't have to see me often. Then he said, Audrey... I honestly love you. I'm serious about us. Hang on, was he for real? It was ridiculous. I was disgusted by him. How could he treat me like that? I hung up and felt horrified. It brought back horrible memories of the woman who stole my dad away from my mom. I didn't want to be that woman. The next day, I moved out of the house Jim had rented for me. I didn't want to be associated with that loser anymore. But life works in mysterious ways. The day I moved into my new house, I saw Jim's wife. And you won't believe it. It seemed that she just moved in next door too. Was this some kind of joke? As soon as she saw me, she smirked and said, Wow, what a coincidence. Hello, neighbor. I'm Linda. Seeing her unpacking her stuff all by herself, I couldn't help but wonder where Jim was. But then I thought maybe Linda had ended things with him and had moved here alone. I hope so anyways. I'd hate to have Jim as a neighbor. So that's when my new life began. And it has been crazy ever since. From that first week of living there, Linda started pranking me. It all began with her throwing trash into my yard. I even caught her doing it and she just grinned and said, Oops, my hand slipped. Then she walked away laughing. It made me furious. And that was just the beginning. One weekend, a delivery guy rocked up on my porch with ten extra large pizzas. I tried to explain I hadn't ordered them, 
and that's when Linda appeared at my door and said, Oh, thanks for ordering me dinner, Audrey. I'm starving. Then she grabbed five of the pizzas and ran to her house, leaving me there with a bill of $100. Jeez, it was so annoying, and I had no option but to pay. Linda was too much. Seriously. As much as her pranks drove me up the wall, I also felt sorry for her. I knew what it was like to have someone you love stolen away from you. She must have hated me so much for ruining her marriage, even though it hadn't been my fault. I decided to just put up with her pranks. She'd get over it eventually, and it's not like they were harming me, right? Well, one night I heard the doorbell. I wasn't expecting anyone and was surprised to see a young guy standing there with a poster that said, I agree to be your boyfriend. Come out with me. I was totally puzzled and told him he had the wrong house, but then he showed me the address on the other side. It was my address. What on earth? I told him I wasn't interested, but he tried to grab my hand and said, Come on, girl, don't be shy. I told him if he didn't leave me alone, I'd call the police. So luckily he ran away. Needless to ask, I knew for sure that was Linda's joke. But this time she had taken it too far. I decided to go over and have a word with her once and for all. As I was walking to her house, I saw someone familiar on the other side of the road. I couldn't believe it. It was my dad? So many years had passed, and he'd completely changed. But there was no doubt it was him. I suddenly blurted out, Dad? But I didn't know what to do next. I was just thinking about my next move when I felt someone behind me. I turned around and saw Linda. She just smirked at me and walked away. What was her problem? Did she hear what I just said? I was so shocked at seeing my dad, I ran back into my house. I hated him for what he'd done to my mom. But he was still my dad, and I wanted to know if he was okay and what he was doing here. I barely slept that night, as I couldn't stop thinking about my dad. The next morning, I was sitting by the window when he appeared again. This time, he was with Linda, and she was holding his arm. What was she doing with my dad? Why were they so close? Later that day, I saw him again. And this time, he and Linda were hugging. OMG, were they dating? Maybe Linda had heard me call him dad. And now she was flirting with him to truly get revenge on me. This was too much. The thought of Linda as a stepmom made me want to puke. I waited and waited, but he was inside her house and there was no sign of him leaving. Eventually he left and as soon as he was in his car, I ran over to her house. I was shaking as I knocked on the door and as Linda opened it, I said, you are way too much. Can you just stop with the revenge already? Linda looked confused and said, What the heck are you talking about? Linda still didn't seem to get it. And I was about to explain when I heard footsteps. I turned around and my dad was right there. He said, What's the matter, Linda? Why are you fighting with this stranger? Huh? Stranger? Didn't he recognize me? Then Linda butted in and said, It's okay, Dad. We're just having a misunderstanding here. What? Dad? Is... He your dad? Really? I stammered. Yeah, why? What's the matter? She said. Linda, you don't need to lie to me. I know you're dating my dad to get revenge on me. I continued. Whoa, hold on. What do you mean your dad? Linda gasped. At that, my dad looked confused too and walked to me and asked if he could look at my hand. After seeing my birthmark, he started crying and hugging me. Audrey, it's you. It's really you. I didn't know how to react, so I just let him hug me. It had been so long since anyone had held me like this. Ever since my mom had died, I'd tried to be strong and keep it together, but suddenly I couldn't hold back anymore. I burst into tears in his arms. We stood like that for a long time, and eventually he took me into Linda's house and told me the story. It turned out, after he left me and my mom, he got tricked by that woman, and he was so ashamed he decided to move to another city and start over. He was working hard on a construction site one day when he got injured, so he ended up in hospital. And that's when he met Linda. She'd been in a car accident and needed a blood transfusion urgently. She has a pretty rare blood type, but luckily my dad had the same type and he volunteered to give her a transfusion. After that, they became quite close, and seeing as Linda had lost both her parents in the car accident, my dad eventually adopted her. I couldn't believe it. My dad had been through so much, and this whole time, I thought he was off living his life with a rich woman. I felt so bad for him and decided to leave the past behind and forgive him. As for Linda, she was also left confused by this coincidence, so she left the room to process everything, while I and Dad took time to catch up on our lives. Later, Linda prepared dinner for us three, and before we digged in, she shyly grabbed my hand and said, Audrey, 
I've been so awful to you. I'm sorry. I know you aren't the one responsible for my divorce, but I still felt upset, and that's why I played all those pranks. That was so childish, right? Please forgive me, sister. We laughed it off, then hugged each other to make peace. I couldn't believe it. After all these years of being lonely, suddenly I had a sister, and my dad was back. My life had finally turned a corner, and I almost laughed at the thought that it was all because of meeting Jim. At least one good thing had come out of that disastrous relationship. Do you believe in fate? Well, I never did. I'm a 21-year-old college student studying finance and banking. So, yeah, numbers are my forte. Therefore, I'm a logical thinker. Horoscopes and chance meetings? As if. But then I met someone who changed it all. I'm Kai, by the way, and let me tell you my story. It all started one evening while studying. I got a serious craving for some Cheetos, so I went out to get some. That's when I saw a petite girl shouting at two huge guys in the park. Hey, Bigfoot, did you really just litter? Pick it up now or I'll give you a good going over. Oh man, did this girl have a death wish? And was she drunk? The two guys didn't look happy. They approached her and one of them even raised his hand up like he was going to hit her. But she quickly pushed his hand away, which only made him madder. Man, I didn't want to get involved in this. So I pretended I hadn't seen them and walked off. But then I was just a few steps away. I heard one of the guys scream. And the other guy said, what the gross? I could have just carried on walking, but nope, my curiosity got the better of me. So I turned around and saw that one guy was covered in vomit. Then the girl pointed at me and said, Honey, there you are. Then she fainted. Huh? I didn't know her. I was staring at them, looking perplexed, when one of the dudes yelled, Why are you still standing there? Quickly take your crazy girlfriend home if you don't want to taste my fist. I was so scared, I hurried over and carried this girl off. I had no idea who she was or where she lived. Um, this was crazy. I placed her down on a nearby bench and looked around for those guys, but luckily they'd gone. I didn't know what to do, so I left her there and walked off. But then I started to feel bad. Was I too heartless? What if something else happened to her? So I went back and gave the girl a piggyback ride back to my house. Jeez, she was so much heavier than she looked. As soon as I dropped her onto the couch, her phone rang, so I answered it. Hello? Then the person on the other end of the line asked, Who are you? Where's my friend? I muttered out my address and was about to tell her to come pick up her friend, but she already hung up. Why was she so rude? I'd almost bust my back carrying her friend to safety. How annoying. This night has been far too dramatic for me, and worse still, I didn't have any Cheetos. I decided to take a shower, then get some sleep. But as soon as I stepped out of the bathroom, the doorbell rang. I presumed it must be the girl's friend, so I answered the door. Then two cops immediately pushed me against the wall and handcuffed me. Before I could fathom what was happening, one of them said kidnap and assault accusations had been made against me, and I was escorted to the station. What? I tried to explain what happened, but they wouldn't listen to me. That night, as I sat in the cold, uninviting cell, I found myself regretting my kindness. I didn't sleep a wink. I just hoped the next morning came quickly, so that I could confront that girl about this false accusation. But before I could do that, the cops released me at dawn. The girl had sobered up, and told them it was all just a misunderstanding. Well, luckily, she still remembered a bit, or else, ugh, I didn't dare to imagine it anymore. I swore I would never get involved with anyone in need ever again. No good deed goes unpunished. For real. A few days later, when I was watching TV, someone knocked on my door. And you wouldn't believe it. It's the drunk girl. I looked at her suspiciously. What are you doing here? The girl didn't say anything. Instead, she coldly slipped past me and entered my house. Huh? What was she playing at? Then she glared at me and asked me about that night. After I told her everything that happened, she laughed. Okay, I believe you. If I didn't, you'd know about it. She held her fist in front of me. I startled and almost fell off my chair. Then she chuckled. Now I'm hungry. Go make your guests some food. What was with this girl? She was so direct and bold. I glanced at her and said no, but she continued. If you don't, I'll go to the cops and change my statement. Then she got up to leave, so I quickly said, okay, okay, fine. Then reluctantly searched my cupboards for food. Ah, trusted spaghetti, how you never fail me. So I prepared Balinese for us. While she was eating, she said, I'm Nora, by the way, the best screenplay writer major in the country. She winked. She thanked me for the food, then left. Phew, that'd be it now, surely. 
Nope, turns out this was just the beginning. The next morning, she texted me. Come pick me up for college ASAP, else I'm calling the cops. Was she being serious? Then she sent me another message with her address and told me to hurry up. I rushed over there and she got into my car, glared at me, and said, You're late. And that's how I somehow became this Nora girl's servant. Her calls and messages could come at any time. And she would always force me to do things for her straight away. One time I was soaking in the bath when she texted and demanded I bring her some chocolate. Another time she called me at 2 a.m. and told me she was bored, so I had to come over and play some video games with her. I also became her unpaid Uber driver. Every day, from home to school and back. And it's inevitable that I overslept once, so Nora bombarded my phone with tons of texts and calls. I groggily answered, and she used her calling the cops threat again to force me to get there in 15 minutes. What a pain in the neck! Another time, I just stepped out of the house to go and hang out with my friends when Nora showed up and insisted that I had to take her to the cinema. She wouldn't take no for an answer, so I had to cancel on my friends and go watch some bland movie with her. Such a troublesome girl, right? But strangely, as time went by, I started to find Nora less annoying, and instead found myself smiling when she texted me or called. On the days when she didn't bother me, well, my mood seemed to dampen. Was I crazy? I mean, she was cute, very spontaneous, and, well, there was no one else quite like her. But then, all of a sudden, the messages and calls stopped. Did she not want me around anymore? I miss Nora. Many times, I had to stop myself from calling her. I should be happy I was out of Nora's control, right? Then one day, out of the blue, my phone beeped. It was Nora. Come to the Starbucks on Vincent Street. Move it. You have five minutes. Jeez, that bossy tone again. Still, I immediately drove to the address. When I got there, I saw Nora with a guy and a girl. I walked over to them and just sat down. Nora held my arm. Honey, why are you so late? I stared at her in surprise. She smiled and turned to the other two. This is Kai, my boyfriend. What? Did I get it wrong? Did she just say I was her boyfriend? Then she said, Kai, this is my former bestie Kim and her boyfriend Greg, who's also my ex. Awkward, right? But I have you now so we can all be friends. Reading the situation, I realized I had to go along with it. So I stroked her hair and said, Yes, my honey muffin, anything you want. My cheesy lines seemed to work as they both looked annoyed then left. So I turned to look at Nora and stammered. Did you just say I'm your boyfriend? Nora said nonchalantly, Yeah, isn't that okay? If you don't like it, forget it. Then she was about to leave. I pulled her hand and said, Yes, of course. Sounds great. So that's how we became an official couple. We went on a few dates and she was her usual demanding self. Not that I'd want her any other way. Then one time, after a month of dating, Nora dragged me to a swan lake in a nearby park. She looked at me for a long time and then said, Kai, I'm studying abroad for a year. I leave tomorrow. I glared at her in surprise and asked why she hadn't told me sooner. She continued, I guess I didn't want to make you sad, and I don't know if your feelings are big enough, so write down your feelings for me and give them to me tomorrow. That night, I carefully wrote down all my thoughts and feelings for her. I still had hope that this one year of long-distance love would be over quickly. The next day, I drove her to the airport and handed her my letter. To my surprise, Nora also gave me a letter and told me over and over that I could only read it when I got home. Of course, I obeyed her. Then read it as soon as I passed my door, and whoa, I wasn't expecting this. In it, Nora confessed all this time she was just using me to get revenge on her ex and took advantage of me to get over him. That night we had first met, she found out about him and Kim, but now she regretted how she treated me. At the end of the letter, she wrote, If fate wants us to be together, then we'll meet again one day. What? I was so shocked, so I called to tell her she didn't need to feel guilty, and that I forgave her. I kept calling, but it didn't work. I also asked her friends, but no one knew how to reach her. She disappeared from all social media, and just like that, she vanished from my life. I missed Nora so much and found myself hoping that fate would reunite me with her someday. Then one time while I was surfing YouTube, this web drama called My Destiny Is Yours caught my eyes. Curious, I decided to check it out. And I watched wide-eyed as my story with Nora played out in front of me through each episode. This definitely was written by Nora. But how would she end it? It stopped at the part where the girl left and cut off all contact with the guy. An announcement popped up on the screen. The finale was launching at 9pm tonight. I anxiously watched the seconds tick by. During the last episode, the two characters met up at a swan lake. I had a hunch, so without a second delay, I immediately ran to the swan lake in the nearby park. 
My heart flipped when I saw a girl standing there. It was Nora. Man, I ran so fast and hugged her. She hugged me back, then said, I was a little nervous you wouldn't see the movie. Then she smirked. But it doesn't matter anyway. I could have just texted you, come to the Swan Lake now, and you would have come, right? Then we both burst out laughing and continued to hug each other. Well, you see, fate brought me and Nora together. And this logic-loving skeptic is now a big believer in destiny. How about you? Have you found your destiny yet? How long is this going to take? So much for taking care of me. Lex, starting today, I'm locking your phone and laptop away. Cruel! Isn't one leg cast enough punishment? Excuse me, you don't deserve to have a say in this. If you hadn't bought our daughter that death trap motorbike in the first place, she'd still be intact. Yeah, sorry for making sure she doesn't grow up boring like her mom. Yeah, another lecture on how irresponsible I was eventually turned into a quarrel between mom and dad instead. They stopped only when mom needed to leave for her business trip in Egypt. I'm done arguing with you. I have a flight to catch. I've got my eye on you, young lady. All the way from Egypt? That's kinda hard. Well, at least Dad's here, so I won't be by myself. The next morning, I woke up to see a note stuck to the fridge. Alex, I'm shooting my new movie in Spain for a few months. There is a strict no phone policy to avoid leaks. So if it isn't urgent, don't call me. Love, Dad. Seriously? Choosing work over me? Why am I still surprised? That's when you get when you have a world-famous actor dad and an award-winning photographer mom. They're rarely home, and whenever they are, they're constantly at each other's throats. All the more reason for me to hang out with my biker gang. I love motorcycles. They're my only getaway. But that's how I messed up my leg. In my defense, I could totally nail that trick and win their stupid bet if it wasn't for that bumpy road. However, not a single one of my homies has checked on me since then. Not even my boyfriend, Blake. But what's really bumming me out is that school's out for summer, yet I can hardly move. So, bored out of my mind, I came up with a new way to entertain myself, which was playing candid camera on this whole suburbia. Thanks to my mom's camera, I had eyes on the newlyweds Cunninghams on the right, the carpenters on the left, a few other houses, and ooh, tiny Timmy across the street. I swear to God, I almost thought some hunky guy had just moved in. My childhood friend, Tiny Timmy, had officially grown into Timothy. He looked just like a muscular version of Timothy Chalamet. Then Tim suddenly sat up and we accidentally made eye contact. Awkward. Looking good, handsome. He's even cuter when he smiles. Oh, he's replying. Even better up close. That's bold, Timmy. Too bad though. Sorry, lame. Tim looks confused at first, then when he saw my cast, he immediately leaves the room. Huh? A broken leg is enough to scare him off? He's lame. Then, the doorbell rang. Hey, that took a while. You're here? Of course, you need to have a closer look, and could use a hand. Or a leg. Yeah, uh, I mean, <clears throat> come help this damsel in distress. From then on, Tim came over every day to help me out around the house. He'd been really helpful and even tried riding my motorcycle so it didn't have to sit idle for too long. Other than that bulked up body, he's still the friend I knew back in the day. We still had so much fun playing video games and watching movies together. You have to watch Bodies Bodies Bodies, it's nuts. Actually, I thought you might be into Ladybird. Such a heartwarming coming-of-age story. Ew, no way. Timothy Chalamet is in it. Okay, sold. But how do you know that it'd sway me? I just do. Like how I know you spy on me from time to time, which, by the way, is super creepy. Yeah, right. As if he didn't intentionally leave his blinds open while working out, Mr. Shy Guy. One day, as usual, me and Tim were hanging out, when suddenly my dear boyfriend Blake made a noisy entrance. Babe, you won't believe this. There's a raising tournament going on in the Upper West Side. You have to come. What's going on here? Sup. What do you mean, sup? Who's this little brat? Oh, this is Tim. Tim, this is Blake. Say hi. Hi. I don't care. What do you think you're doing? Watch your tongue. You've been ignoring me for weeks, and now you show up raving on about some dumb street racing contest? You don't even remember that I broke my leg, do you? But, but, you're mine. Blake was fuming like a bull ready for battle and about to throw hands at Tim. 
but he stopped his fist mid-air. A defeated-looking Blake fled off as soon as he got out of Tim's grip. Coward. I apologized to Tim for dragging him into this mess, and he was surprisingly cool about it. Just curious, how did Blake and you become a thing? He's the leader of the biker gang, so I thought he was cool. But honestly, I never expected our relationship to last. Just like every other couple's. Exhibit A, my parents. I see. My dad's a good example as well. Then Tim revealed that his dad left his mom for another woman last year, which really upset him. I could relate so much to his situation. Maybe being locked up at home wasn't so bad after all, since we had the chance to catch up on everything. But the following morning, when I was chilling in my room, something horrible caught my eye. Something blonde. It looked like she was returning a hoodie to Tim. What kind of friend borrows a hoodie and acts like that around each other? Let's see what he has to say for himself. Who's that blonde? What was she doing at your place today? What? Who? She might look like strawberry shortcake, but don't be fooled. Whatever love you two might think you have will soon fade. That sweetness will turn sour in no time. <laughs> Tim just burst out laughing. What's so funny? What made you think so? You don't even know Annabelle. Don't believe me? See for yourself. I then showed him all of the secrets I'd uncovered in our seemingly quiet neighborhood. First off, the couple from number 9 were both having affairs. The daughter from number 11 was using her boyfriend to hide her real relationship with another girl. And last but not least, the Carpenters, who seemed like suburban couples goal, actually had a far from blissful life due to Mr. Carpenter's drinking problem. In conclusion, there's no such thing as real love. I see your point, but on the other side of the spectrum, genuine love does exist. Tim points the camera towards the Cunninghams. Hmm, I'm not buying their poster couple act. Then, one day, Tim said he had to work overtime at the library to prepare for an event with, you guessed it, Annabelle only. I had to hide my anger as I watched him drive off with Blondie. With nothing else to do, I decided to watch the Cunninghams. Jeez, how could they seem so lovey-dovey all the time? I wanted to take my mind off of Tim, but the more I observed them, the more I thought about him with that Barbie. That's when I saw a book that Tim borrowed for me from the library. Looks like it's time to return it. I ubered there, but there are many people here as well. Why did Tim say that the two of them would be here alone? Tim's face turned into the scream when he saw me. Didn't think I could get this far? Hi, don't mind me. I'm just here to return this. You should have just given it to me. Oh god, no. I can see that you're busy with... Annabelle, isn't it? Yeah. How do you know my name? Oh, let's see. You remind me of that creepy doll who's also an absolute nightmare. Tim then immediately dragged me away. See? He's caring for me, not you, Annie. However, the fun was interrupted right away when I saw Blake outside. Time for you to pay. Tim immediately stood between Blake and me. But to our surprise, Blake signaled for his goons hiding close by to show themselves. Clearly outnumbered, I tried to stop the situation from getting worse. Let's be civilized here. We can sort this out without violence. You're right, babe. We can settle this with a bet. Whoever can do the trick that broke Lex's leg and top it off with the Akira slide can have her fair and square. The loser has to back down. First of all, I'm not some kind of trophy. Second of all, that stunt is incredibly dangerous. Right, Tim? Sounds worth it, though. Have both of you lost your minds? Tim went first, and even though he flunked it, he managed to land without a scratch, while Blake landed on his face. Of course, that fiasco got the whole gang so embarrassed, they scrammed immediately. But I was still so annoyed. Congratulations, you won absolutely nothing. Not that I didn't care about him, I just couldn't stand his recklessness anymore. The next day, I was woken up by a doorbell. So, what are you here for? Sorry about last night. But if you stayed longer, I could have told you that I did what I did because I like you. Romantic styles. I don't even remember since when, but I do remember how sad I was when we stopped hanging out. Believe it or not, I started working out just to impress you. Whoa, what? Tim explained that nothing was going on between Annabelle and him. They were simply co-workers. And he made up that whole thing about being alone with her at the library to see my reaction. What do you say? I can make you believe in love. 
Tim, don't be ridiculous. Love isn't anything like the movies. It's merely a temporary chemical reaction in your brain that makes you think you're really feeling it. Come on, just give it a chance. No, look at my parents, your father, all the families in this neighborhood. If you ask me, your feelings for me right now will fade, just like mine with Blake. I'm sorry for wasting your time. I thought I was special enough for you to take a leap of faith. Now I know how wrong I was. He then left without another word. When Tim closed his blinds, honestly, I felt a sting in my chest. This is for the best, right? I can't deny the uneasiness I felt without Tim. It's not that he didn't want us to make up, I just didn't know how. Seeing how happy and smiley he was with her, my uneasy feeling only grew bigger. Is this what they call love? No, no, no. It's not real. Happy-looking families are not actually happy, and the Cunninghams are just good at faking it. What's that I'm hearing? Are they fighting? I saw the husband suddenly punch the wall with rage, then push the wife. I no longer had eyes on them, but could hear a huge commotion over there. What on earth is going on? Panicked, I called the cops right away. Wait a second, that means their happy marriage really was fake. I excitedly limped across the street to tell Tim about my discovery, then dragged him over to the Cunningham's front lawn. However, when the cops arrived, both of them answered the door perfectly fine. Turns out they already knew about my spying, and were so annoyed by it, they decided to pull a prank on me. Great, my curious neighbors have also witnessed this whole humiliating ordeal. But the worst part was seeing the disappointment on Tim's face. You have to stop being so stubborn. Not every family is like yours. I couldn't say a word, not even when the cops gave me a warning. That night, I tossed and turned as Tim's words wiggled around my mind. Suddenly, something caught my attention. It's from Tim's house. Some flashlights were moving around. I tried calling Tim, but he didn't answer. Of course, he'd be in deep sleep by now. Calling the cops was useless because of that very recent embarrassing incident. That's it, I'm doing it myself. Out there on Tim's front lawn, my heart was beating like crazy. Thieves! Thieves! The startled thieves turned around, so I blared the air horn, then shouted. Freeze! Stay where you are! Hands over your heads! But, obviously, I, a teenager with one working leg, never actually expected any criminal to stand still. They quickly got a hold of me, and right when I thought my life was over, get away from her! Tim, thank goodness! Other neighbors also came and stopped the thieves. Tim called the cops, and this time, they reported to the scene ASAP. Phew, that was insane. Mrs. Jones, Tim's mom, thanked me and invited me to stay the night. It's really nice of her, even though she burst out laughing when I explained the situation with the Cunninghams. When Tim went to grab some drinks for us, she asked me why I was alone in this condition. So, I spilled everything about my family. Contrary to her reaction just now, she showed me sympathy. From her experience, love didn't always have a happy ending, but it doesn't mean it's not real. Tim's dad and I had genuine feelings for each other. It's just that over time, things changed. We're open to accept this and be honest with each other. That's what real love is. I wouldn't change a thing and I would still fall crazily in love with him, despite knowing we would eventually break up. Because that's how I got Tim, the second real love of my life. Her words hit different. Maybe I'd given love a bad name. You're right, love is not at fault. And Tim is so lucky to have a loving mom like you. Meanwhile, my parents don't just hate each other, they put it all on me too. Bet you, even tonight's incident won't make them care. I see where you're coming from, but why don't you just give it a try? Their reactions might surprise you. So, I called them up, and guess what? They both sounded concerned on the phone and said they'd come home as soon as they could. See, I told you so. It's alright now. Timmy, please show Lex where she'll be sleeping. That was really brave of you. Being all heroic out there despite your whole situation, I wouldn't have risked my life if it wasn't for- If it wasn't for what? I'm all ears. For you. I'm sorry I overreacted. The thought of becoming a boring old couple who hate each other bugged me. But then I realized if we were together, we wouldn't have to be that. We could be like the Cunninghams. That doesn't sound too bad now, does it? I guess not. Next morning, I woke up to my parents' call. They actually kept their promise this time. 
My mom explained that she thought dad was home to take care of me. While dad absentmindedly assumed mom only left it a fit of anger and was gonna return soon. So they really do care about me. They just have a terrible way of showing it. They stayed together, thinking it would be best for me. But the unending tension and bickering was eating us all up from the inside. This incident opened their eyes, so they agreed to have a peaceful divorce while still looking after me together. I'm finally free from the cast, but I actually feel even more liberated than before. Is this the power of my newfound belief in love? Is it because I've realized that love was around me all along? I'm not sure myself, but who cares? Alex and Timothy signing off. This was my first ever day at high school. And naturally, I'm owning it. I mean, who wouldn't want to befriend someone as beautiful and friendly as me? By lunchtime, I already had loads of new friends, and everyone flocked around me to hear stories about my amazing life. I soon became super popular at school. I was the gorgeous, enchanting blonde beauty. Do you know what the best part was? Boys started noticing me too. Even the captain of the basketball team, Mitch, took a liking to me. It makes sense. I mean, obviously, the best-looking boy in the school is going to be interested in the best-looking girl. And guess what? He's following me on my way home right now. Stalking me much, huh? Just wait for it. It seemed like my new life here in this school was going to be awesome. Well, well, Mandy. That was not an easy question, but you answered it perfectly. Great work. See, I'm not just a pretty face. I'm also one of the smartest students in the school. My admirers grew and grew. It seemed like everyone wanted to spend time with someone as perfect as me. Here, I was telling my new friends about how at first, people sometimes misjudge me, as I come from a well-educated and extremely successful family. My parents are super wealthy individuals who encourage me to always be the best version of myself and strive hard to never let them down. Hey, Mandy? Pardon me, but how come you never wear designer clothes or use anything expensive? She looked down at my tatty-looking sneakers. I see why it might seem a little peculiar, but you see, I dress this way because my parents value the importance of being humble. That's also how I live. Goodness is better than beauty, right? Then I pulled out my phone and showed them the grades from my last school. Everyone gasped at me for being so excellent. I was loved, admired, adored. But of course, being this amazing meant that there's just gotta be quite a few kids being jealous of me. I mean, I suppose I couldn't blame them. After all, I dazzled like a diamond while they were just dull and ordinary. One time after an exam, as soon as the teacher left, this girl called Layla stood up and said, Mandy cheated. I saw it with my own eyes. I saw it too. She checked her phone during the exam. Everyone was gasping in shock. Right at that moment, the class president, Marshall, shouted, Hey, he quit it. We all know Mandy's a great student. There's no way she cheated. Huh, that's what I'm talking about. Layla and Susan must be bursting with envy that their petty plan to ruin me didn't work. And the class president, hmm, he came out of nowhere to protect me. He must be another one of my many admirers. But sorry, Marshall, I'm way out of your league. A girl like me needed a handsome, rich, mature kind of guy. These boys at school are cute, but they're just boys. They're beneath me. One time I was in a rush and didn't have time to search my locker, so I accidentally took the wrong textbook with me to class. Seeing my mistake, Layla and Susan immediately jumped in. Uh-oh, what's this? We thought Miss Perfection here never messed anything up. I didn't even have a chance to say anything, as this Beth girl spoke up. He cut it out. Who doesn't make mistakes once in a while, huh? Here, you can share mine. Oh, wow. This girl was kind of nice. It was good to have an ally to deal with Layla and Susan. So, at lunchtime, I joined Beth's table. We started chatting and... She was clearly fascinated by how amazing my life was. Great, 
Now I had a faithful sidekick. <laughs> hey, Beth, help me do the homework for today, okay? Uh, again? I have to attend a very important party with my parents tonight. There will be politicians and plutocrats. I won't have time to do homework. Now I have to go home early to get dressed and do my makeup. Bye! I didn't need to turn around to see her funny, bewildered face. She looked like that every time I asked her to do my homework. But it was worth it. Right, Beth? She got to hang out with the hottest prodigy in school. Me! So a little bit of extra homework was a small price to pay for such a privilege. You know, to me, that homework was nothing. I just didn't have time for it. I had to admit that having Beth around was very convenient. She made sure my grades stayed top of the class, leaving me time to play polo, go to the golf club, and attend charity functions with my parents. She also let me borrow her dresses, bags, makeup, and this super cute pair of high heels. My friends admired me, strangers idolized me, my teachers adored me, and I had a wonderful loyal best friend. Life was perfect. Until one day, as I was shimmying along the hallway, I noticed something odd. People weren't giving me their usual looks of adoration. Instead, they were turning their noses up at me. Huh? What was happening? Hey, Beth, do you know what's going on? People are acting really weird. She just shrugged. I don't know. Let's see. I tried to tell myself that it was no big deal, but I couldn't shake off the feeling that something was wrong. Then later that day, my worst fears were confirmed. As I entered the classroom, Marshall came over to me and waved his phone in my face. Good game, Miss Perfect. Turns out you're just a big fat liar. I looked at his phone and saw a long post with a lot of photos attached. There's a big title saying, The Truth About Mandy the Liar, and each photo came with a caption. Mandy's house is actually very ordinary. She lives with her grandparents. There are no luxurious mansions or wealthy parents. When Mandy just came to the school, she made friends with everyone, bragging about her fame, fortune, and popularity. I don't know who she is. So what if we just shared the same path to the bus stop? Who said that I intend to get acquainted with her? Her transcript from her old school isn't even hers. She's just photoshopped her name on it. Every time she stood up to answer a question or take a test, she cheated, so she got a good grade. God, all this? How did they know? I felt like my heart had lodged in my throat, and my mind was spinning. My eyes blurred when I saw Layla and Susan approaching me. I stared at them in shock. Mandy, honestly, we don't hate you. It's just that we realized your stories were ridiculous. So we decided to find out the truth. That's right. But you sure did cover your tracks. We couldn't find a thing. Hang on. So who found these pieces of evidence? I did! Right at that moment, my so-called best friend appeared, followed by the homeroom teacher. Mandy, I know you think I'm some desperate wannabe you can control, but no! I soon worked out that everything you said was a lie, so I gathered evidence to prove it. Everyone was gawping at me with disappointment. I felt completely overwhelmed by the situation. This couldn't actually be happening. I pinched my arm. Ouch! It was as painful and as real as what was going down before my eyes right now. Beth continued. It's not good for you to live a lie like this. Who even are you? Ah! Reality images started flooding into my mind, making my brain feel like it was going to explode. I grabbed my head and ran out of the classroom. When I opened my eyes, I found myself in the hospital. The homeroom teacher was sitting next to me, and my grandparents were also there. They all looked very disappointed. Mandy? The principal was very angry and was about to expel you. But it was Beth and her friends who convinced him to let you stay. What? Beth? But she was the one who exposed me. Noticing my surprise, the teacher continued. After seeing your reaction, Beth realized that perhaps you had a psychological problem. So she convinced us to help bring you to the hospital for diagnosis. I looked up at my grandparents. They were all in tears. 
Unexpectedly, I burst out crying. I longed so much to have a dream life full of fame, riches, and admirers that I drew a vision for myself in another reality. I was so absorbed in that illusory scenario that I forgot my own reality. This was last month, and I'm currently on medication for my delusions, and I'm also seeing a therapist. Right now, I'm on my way to see Beth, Layla, Susan, and Marshall. No, I'm not making it up. I really am meeting them. Oh gosh, there they are. This is scary, but it's something I've got to do. So I took a deep breath, then taking my therapist's advice, I spoke from the heart. Hi guys, thanks for coming. Firstly, I want to apologize for lying. The truth is, I've lived the lie so much that I could no longer distinguish what was real and what wasn't. My therapist helped me see that this all began after I lost my parents. Part of my subconscious craved for this dream life so badly that I created a new one. This way I didn't have to accept the truth, which is that my parents have passed away and I live with my dirt-poor grandparents. When I finished talking, I looked at them, half expecting them to shout at me or something, but instead, Beth smiled at me and said, It took a lot of guts to come here and say that. I'm sorry, too. I shouldn't have outed you like that, but I didn't know you were ill. Same. I'm proud of you. Me, too. Me, three. Now, when are we going to order cake? <laughs> <laughs> So, what now? Well, I'm still taking my medication and talking to my therapist. I can now tell the difference between the make-believe and reality. Also, I'm back at school, and my teachers and classmates have all been really welcoming. Better still, I now have some awesome friends who like me for me. And you know what? It turns out that living in reality isn't actually so bad after all. It was the final match. My team, the Bulldogs, were neck on neck with our opponent, the Knights. Declan passed me the ball and I sprinted towards the goal, outrunning all the chasing Knights players. Suddenly, this guy cut me off and tackled me to the ground. I managed to break free, lunging towards the goal, and scored a triumphant touchdown. My teammates and I were celebrating when I saw the player who tackled me, Cody, talking to the ref and pointing at me. Suddenly, the ref blew his whistle. She's a girl, I could tell when I tackled her. She's a girl, so what? Why is a girl on a boys football team playing as a dude? She's not even registered properly. But she's the best player who scored more points than anybody on the Knights team, alone, and the winning goal. Despite Declan and my teammates standing up for me, the ref announced it was an unfair score and gave the win to the Knights. Hey, it's okay, Riley. We had a good game and a good season because you're here. Right, guys? Yeah, I'm okay, guys. That player, Cody, you sir have made an enemy for life. Hi, I'm Riley, a tomboy through and through. I prefer getting down and dirty on the football field rather than fussing over makeup and boys. Ironically, Nola, the girliest girl you know, is my best friend since childhood, and also the only girlfriend I hang out with. But even then, sometimes Nola's feminine energy got out of control. Like today, when she's crying over some boy she was in a complicated relationship with. We've been together for a while when I saw him seeing another girl today. Yeah, things happen. I swear we locked eyes and he totally ignored me. What a jerk! Riley, you have to help me get back at him! What? No, I don't want to get mixed up in all this toxic drama! You should ask someone else. This guy is so charming that any other girl I'll ask will fall in love with him. But you, Riley, are the only one who would be immune to Cody's charm. Wait, Cody? Cody Nelson? The footballer? Yeah, I told you about him before! Shoot. I should have listened to Nola's boy dramas before, but whatever. Right. What Cody did to you is absolutely outrageous. We gotta teach him a lesson. And for you, Nola, I got your back. Okay, the plan is to ruin his image in front of other girls and make him fall in love with you all at the same time. And then we'll dump him right away, breaking his little heart. But we need to give you a makeover as he only has eyes for girly girls. Nola then called Halsey, a makeup artist from the school over. Yeah, we definitely can't seduce a guy with this. I bet lots of girls are falling for you instead. 
Nola and Halsey then dragged me into a clothing store. The minute I saw racks lined with dresses, my first instinct was to run. I had to try on dozens of dresses, and Halsey trained me to walk like a lady. They even talked about a curtsy? Who curtsies anymore? Then Halsey taught me how to slow dance, which I quickly mastered, but they didn't seem impressed. Halsey suddenly grabbed my waist and took the lead. I was following her steps when, OMG, they look so cute! Eek! Only girls understand each other. What? Do we look like a couple to them? Stay cool, Riley, this is just for revenge. Nola's plan better be worth it. The next day, I brought my princess makeover to school, ready for Cody, when, Hey, you look familiar. Have I met you before? Oh shoot, it's him! Did he recognize me from the match? I know, must have seen you in my dreams. Phew, false alarm. Cody then asked for my number and we started going out. During the dates, I was so nervous without Halsey and Nola. Okay, Riley, act proper. You're not in your natural habitat. Gosh, you look like an actual princess. Another time, my mouth watered at the burger on the menu, but despite starving, I tried to keep calm and had to order a salad instead. Aw, only a salad? You eat like a little birdie. <sighs> it's exhausting to be a girl. But after all the dates with me, Cody hasn't announced anything official between us. Is it his natural instinct to be flirting with girls? Ugh, Nola's plan's obviously not working. I gotta take matters into my own hands. So I secretly poured some estrogen powder into Cody's protein shake and texted Nola to come see the show. Ha, <laughs> look at the way he dunks the ball. Let's see if he could still be Prince Charming now. Later, he clashed with another player, fell to the ground rolling and whimpering in pain like a baby. I was satisfied for today. Suddenly, I saw Declan walking over and he sat right next to me. Oh no, my buddy can't see me in this embarrassing look. Just then, a basketball came hurtling towards me when Declan's quick reflexes got me behind him and caught the ball with his free hand. Are you all right? Yeah, thanks to this. Friend, here. <laughs> Say, what is a pretty girl like you doing in a sports event like this? Thanks for saving my girlfriend. I can handle it from here. Thank God you're okay, Riley. Aw, he's so sweet, so soft and cute. What? Would you stop saying he's soft and cute? He's not that kind of man. You're right. He's a manly man. We're so sorry, Cody. We didn't mean anything by it. Wow, I didn't know such a little girl like you had such a big voice. I'm so happy to have you by my side. Hey, Riley, would you come to the fundraiser carnival with me? I'll make an announcement to everyone there. Wait, was this guy serious? When I got home that night, I saw Declan waiting outside on the porch. I looked at him and then down at my outfit and back to him in panic. So, that really was you back there. So, you really did recognize me. Why didn't you say anything back there? You looked so nervous and acted like you didn't know me, so I didn't want to embarrass you. Anyway, when did you start going out with Cody? Why change so much for him? I explained everything to Declan. The whole revenge plot for Nola and how I'm doing this to get back at Cody for taking away our championship. Well, the Bulldogs were in the wrong for letting you play in the first place. It was a men's final. I don't care. He has to pay for it. Then I stormed inside. I gotta stand my ground. But Nola was there already sitting on my bed. I heard the whole thing. Makes sense now why you are suddenly interested in the plan. Anyway, whatever you're in it for, your main goal is to ruin Cody's reputation. Don't get sidetracked. Okay, guess I have to attend the carnival with Cody then. On the day of the carnival, I saw Cody waiting for me at the entrance. But I couldn't show up looking like this without Halsey. She was dancing her heart out at Coachella, all the way in California. Suddenly, Cody and I locked eyes. I frantically looked for my nearest exit, but Cody was coming quick. Suddenly, I felt an arm wrap around my waist and turn me around. It was Declan? I saw Cody give up and walk away. Other girls were trying to approach him, but he just declined them. Was he still looking for me? Maybe he's not the bad guy Nola painted for me. See, he doesn't deserve the whole revenge plot against him. Yeah, I didn't expect that. He seems to like you a lot, and you should just stop this and be yourself. Declan and I shared a brief moment of silence. Under the sunset glow, Declan looks so charming. Has he always looked like this? You suddenly notice how handsome I am? I mean, yeah, you could be quite a catch. How come no one's tried to sweep you off your feet yet? Maybe they have, but none of them have ever been interesting enough. Besides, I already have eyes for someone else. Huh? Um, I, uh, I need to grab a bite. I'm starving. Bye. Declan's just a buddy I've known for ages. Why was my stomach doing a cartwheel just then? Ah! Oh, it's just you. Mission success. Huh? 
I just saw Cody post you as his official girlfriend. Nola was right. Cody posted his official announcement about us. Now all you have to do is dump him in public. Nola, I have to tell you something. This has gone on for too long. I'm sick of being someone I'm not. And I don't think Cody's that bad of a guy. He totally is. You're not falling for him, are you? Don't disappoint me, Riley. In the next morning, Nola brought Halsey over, saying it was cultural exchange day today at school, the perfect place and time to dump Cody. Too tired to start a fight with Nola. Ugh, I had to go along with it. At school, I stumbled upon Declan. He asked me to join him in the eating competition. It was kind of awkward after I ran away from him yesterday, but such an attractive offer. How could I say no? Man, I was born to do this. We were the last two standing in the competition, but Declan gave up and I won. I wasn't even thinking and I hugged him automatically. When I realized what I'd done, I let go of him, but my heart was racing. Could it have been the adrenaline of eating 12 huge burritos? After the competition, Declan and I were walking off all the food when we stumbled upon Cody. 12 extra extra large burritos in 15 minutes? You won this? Cody! No, this is his! What are you doing with him, anyway? You're my girlfriend. You don't even know Riley for who she is. She's mine. Hold on now, guys. What on earth are you talking about? Don't listen to him. Let's go. You're not going with him. What do you mean? Stop! Let go of me! You're annoying me! This guy is so crazy. We gotta go. Now you're telling him I'm crazy? Cody, Riley is the girl you outed during the Bulldogs vs. Knights game. She's just trying to act girly and doing all this to get back at you. Cody was shocked and looked at me waiting. Ugh, it's true, Cody. I started all this to get back at you. It just seemed so unfair. I'm just as good as any of the boys on the field. I worked my butt off for that game, and I scored the winning goal just to have it stripped away from me. Riley, actually, I was just so stressed that day and the Knights were losing, but I didn't do it to discriminate against you in the game. I'm so sorry for doing it to you. I was taken aback by his apology. It was so sincere and honest. <laughs> it's a pity. What is? I actually fell so hard for this girly you. Aw, that's sweet, Cody. Tell you what, I'll make it up to you by bringing my real self to prom. And if you like this look right now, I know just who to introduce you to. Ha, <laughs> deal. By the way, if I'd known sooner, I wouldn't have acted so poorly towards Declan. He seemed really hurt when he chose my side. I felt horrible about what I'd said to Declan. Even if he didn't agree with what I was doing, he was always there for me. But I acted like my best buddy in the world was a jerk in front of Cody. I was feeling all gloomy in my bedroom when Halsey showed up and asked to sleep over. Whatever, make yourself at home. Just leave me alone, okay? Actually, I can't. I saw the fight this afternoon between Declan and Cody. Gotta say, kinda admire Declan for speaking his heart. Unlike someone. What do you mean? Come on, you like Declan, don't you? Huh? N no, we're just homies. Oh yeah? So what you're feeling for Declan is also the same as the other homies of yours? What Halseed said made me think about recent moments I had with Declan. When he protected me from the basketball, when he held me at the carnival, and when I accidentally hugged him at the competition. My heart acted so weird. My feelings for Declan are definitely different from anyone else. Idiot, you do like him. But what you did this afternoon must have hurt him a lot. What should I do now? Why not ask him to the dance? That's right, I got to redeem myself and make up with Declan, but I still couldn't face him and talk right now. So the next morning, I prepared a letter to send Declan. In the letter, I told him how I realized that I had feelings for him and that I wanted to take him to prom. Then Nola stormed into my room. Why didn't you dump the guy as planned? I explained to her that Cody's actually a confirmed good guy and insisted that she goes to prom. Plus, I had a big surprise for her. I also revealed that I have feelings for Declan and I'm going to send this letter to him. After I told her that, Nola's face perked up and she suggested that she help hand deliver the note just in case Declan was still mad at me. But days passed and I hadn't heard anything from Declan. I guess he was really mad at me and couldn't bring himself to reply to my letter. I really was horrible to him. Halsey came over, cheered me up and suggested that we go to prom together instead. That really cheered me up and I agreed to go with her. She gave me another makeover, but this time it was more natural. I felt more myself. Halsey and I arrived at prom and I was confused and disappointed to see Declan showing up with Nola? Neither of them told me they were going together. Right then, Cody appeared. Hey Riley, you look great. The natural look really suits you. Thanks. Now, I have someone you should meet. Are you happy now, Riley? Being with your so-called enemy? Turns out I didn't know you at all. After I poured my heart out in that letter, he's still so mad at me that he'd attack me like this? I couldn't stand for it, so I fought back and we broke out in an argument. Enough! What is wrong with you, Declan? You didn't reply to her letter and still have the audacity to be mad at her? 
what letter? Halsey and I turned towards Nola, and after a moment of nothing, Nola burst into tears. I hate you, Riley. You promised you'd help me get back at Cody, then you abandoned me completely. So I didn't give the letter to Declan. Nola, I never abandoned you. When I realized that Cody was a good guy, I wanted to reintroduce you to him so you both could have a fresh start. So you were going to introduce me to Nola? You like her style, don't you? Yeah, but she thinks I'm a playboy, and she went as far as to create this whole revenge plot against me. This is all your fault for chasing after me and then dropping me for some other girl. Do you know how disheartening that is? I thought you didn't like me, so I moved on. Back then, I just tried to play hard to get. If only you tried a little harder, I'd have let you know. I didn't understand before, but I get it now. Can we start over? I'd like that. The DJ started to play a slow song, and Declan suddenly pulled me in to dance with him. So, that letter, what did it say? It said that I'm sorry for not realizing my feelings earlier. Then, I confess my love to you and asked you to prom. Well then, here's my response. Riley, I liked you the minute I set my eyes on you. I wanted to do everything with you. I wanted to hang out, I wanted to play football with you, and I wanted to be by your side every moment of my waking hour. I could never figure out how you felt, so I hid my feelings for you. At that moment, Declan and I were the only two people in the world. We danced throughout the whole night, and I felt complete. And that's why you should just speak your heart, everyone. If you want to hear my story, comment Helsey's story, and I'll see you then. Okay, animators, you can continue. Hi, I'm Kaylee from Washington. I might dress like a boy, but I'm actually the girliest girl you could ever meet. Before I continue, please like and subscribe. I was born with shiny blonde hair and blue eyes, just like my mom. I never met my dad, but it wasn't really a big deal. There's no need to live in some fancy castle to feel like a princess. I was already one in my mom's eyes. She always pampered me with the cutest things in the world. You could give Rapunzel a run for her money, sweetheart. But tragically, mom left me in an accident when I was 10, and I had to move in with Selena, my mom's friend. She lived in a mansion, where there were so many people dressed just like her. As soon as they saw me, they started to ooh and ah at me. What a porcelain doll! Bet she'll win any beauty pageants. She's just too lovely to be real! Shh, Miss Sanchez here doesn't like anyone who's prettier than her daughter. Yeah, she's been in a foul mood ever since the master left for his mistress. I only caught a bit of what they said before Selena dragged me into a corner. Sweetie, you heard them. Boys are bad news. Just look at your dad, for example. So stay away from them. Got it? Um... And the only way to repel them is if you look more like them. Then she told me to wear contact lenses to hide my blue eyes, cut my long locks, threw away my dress collection, and bought me clothes that basically drowned me. And voila, I look just like a teenage boy. One day, I was alone in the kitchen when I heard someone shouting, Bring me two smoothies now! I brought in two avocado shakes, but accidentally splashed one all over this girl's face, turning her into Shrek. Watch what you're doing! My daughter's angel face is destined to be Miss USA! How dare you! I, I'm i sorry, ma'am. Relax, mom. Avocado face masks clear all the rage anyway. Sadly, I still had to take my punishment, but suddenly the girl walked towards me. Hey, I'm Beatrix. Let's go and play. But I'm... Don't worry, I'm here. My mom won't punish you anymore. Then she took me to her room. Wow, she even has a castle inside? Beatrix then put some wigs and makeup on me. I looked at myself in the mirror, and memories of my mom came rushing back. I quickly pulled out the photo of her that I carried with me all the time. We looked so alike. I was about to take my lenses out, when Selena stormed in and dragged me back to my room. Don't you ever let me catch you here again, and keep your distance from little mistress. We're not from the same world as people like them, remember that? But little did Selena know, Beatrix had just asked her mom to allow me to go to school with her. And ever since then, we've been literally inseparable. I mean literally. She clinged to me from living room to kitchen, from home to school. Honestly, the only time I could have a moment of peace was when I went to the restroom. Phew. Oh, maybe not. And each time we hung out was more than torture. I had to fight against the urge to act girly, hit my own hands whenever they started to reach for those pretty things, and now they ended up swollen. Think I'll glue them in my pockets next time. Then, one day, 
I arrived at school to the most terrible news ever. Kaylee, one of our female rugby players got injured, so I put you on the team. What on earth? I don't even know what rugby is. Here's Austin, your rugby coach. If you need anything, he's your guy. You know him? He might be handsome, but something about him screams bad news. People call him awful Austin. You better watch out. And she wasn't exaggerating at all. On the very first day, he already pushed me to my absolute limits in training, but I almost passed out. In the agility ladder exercises, I got my feet tangled up in the line and fell to the ground. But instead of a hand, all I got was his soulless look. Then one time, I missed the ball, causing it to hit another player. Hey, is this a joke to you? Do it properly. Keeping all Celine's words in mind, I zipped my mouth up and ignored him, who was definitely a boy. Oi, what's the attitude? You're bringing the whole team down. See? Cat got your tongue? Faking dumb doesn't work here. From tomorrow, extra training. No excuses. Beatrix was right. He was a devil. I was dragging my aching body home after training. When I noticed a cute cat and stopped to pet it, the cat ran away, so I followed it and ended up at the back gate of the school, which was totally off limits. I've never been here before. Whoa, look at this beautiful mural. It's so mesmerizing. What you doing here? Awful Austin? Uh, um, I just... Anyway, did you paint this? It's amazing. Of course not. Stop crying. He was such a terrible liar. But to be honest, I didn't expect some jock like him to be interested in art, let alone actually be good at it. What are you two doing here? Don't move! Oh no, the guard has spotted us! Austin immediately grabbed my hands and started running. We hid in a small alley, and he pressed me against the wall with his strong arms. My heart was racing like crazy, and I could feel his too. We were so close that our faces were only inches apart, and the warmth of his breath made me blush even more, so I accidentally let out a squeal. Thankfully, before things could get any more awkward, the guard was gone. Don't even think of breathing a single word about this. Weirdly, this time his words didn't hurt at all. Maybe because I knew, beneath his tough jock exterior, he had his own secret, just like me. I like your painting, so no need to hide it. Austin stopped for a bit, then kept walking, but I'm sure I caught a smile. After that day, he started to behave quite differently, more gently. He no longer went berserk at me, but helped me get through the training instead so I could catch up with the other players. I just had my first successful kick. Yay! I turned around to cheer with Austin, but out of nowhere, the ball came hurtling right at me, and he instantly caught it with one hand, while the other held me by the waist. Okay, that was awkward. This week, there'd be a senior prom at school, and Beatrix insisted we go. Of course, I gave her a no, but she was literally a leech, so I had no other choice. Wear this, Kay. It's a matching set. It'll be so lame if I wear this alone, please. Fine, but only because you've given me no choice. Yay, love ya. Eek! Wow, it smelled so good. What if I put it on? But wait, what about Selena? Forget it. It's not like she'll be at the prom. YOLO. I stepped into the ballroom with this gorgeous outfit on, my blue eyes, and the necklace my mom gave me. Everyone jaw dropped as soon as they saw me, and that's when I noticed Austin coming towards me. Hey, you look different tonight. Uh, I mean in a good way. Wanna dance? Sorry, girls time. Kaylee, look at the tasty food corner. Told you we had to come here. Oh, Beatrix, my friend here is starving. Can you show him where to grab a bite? Wow, sure, handsome. We have cupcakes, biscuits, uh, and even brownies. Isn't this called choosing boys over friends? <laughs> Good for her, anyway. <laughs> then Austin gently led me in the waltz. He looked exactly like a prince from a fairy tale. As we fell in step, letting the rhythm control our movements, I felt my whole body tingle. The sparks were definitely flying. But suddenly, the music changed into trance. We looked into each other's eyes for a second, then, hand in hand, ran across the crowd until we got outside. I could never imagine a tomboy could become like this. Actually, I'm not a tomboy. What do you mean? That's when I decided to tell him everything about how I was obsessed with girly things, but had to suppress it all my life. It felt so good to let it all out after burying it the whole time. And Austin was such a good listener. Wow, Kaylee, I'm so sorry. Actually, I've also had to hide my passion for arts to help my father's business too. So what you said to me the other day really opened up something in me. So things were not easy for him either, huh? 
Suddenly, he pulled out a sketchbook and started drawing me. I wish this moment would last forever. His face then went all serious, but not in a cold way as usual, but instead, beaming with passion. Our eyes met, and I thought my heart was gonna jump out of my chest. And yes, I hoped this moment would last forever too. Then suddenly, he leaned closer to fix my hair. I was ready for a kiss. Then, Kaylee! Selena, how did she find out about this? Man, you know what's coming next. I can't believe you'd be this reckless. You're not my mom, and not every boy is like my dad. You were wrong. Mind your manners. Get changed now. Right then, Mrs. Sanchez came to interrupt us. Hang on, are her eyes blue? And what's this? Uh, um, don't mind her. I bought this half price at the swap meet, ma'am. Then she signaled for me to flee the scene. If mom were here, she'd understand the way I feel. Blinking back tears, I suddenly felt a warm hand on my shoulder. Are you alright? I saw you leave with Austin. Did he cut your hair? It looks shorter. I'm okay, Beatrix. Oh wow, I have a similar necklace that my dad gave to me. This was from my dad too, except that I don't actually know who he is. Maybe your dad is my dad? <laughs> Zero for the joke, Beatrix. Oh, but why did Selena lie about the necklace to Miss Sanchez? So I went to find Selena right after, and she told me the most shocking thing ever. Beatrix's dad, the former master here, was actually my dad. He seduced mom, who used to be a maid here too. When Mrs. Sanchez found out, both of them were kicked out of the house. Then knowing mom was having me, he dumped her right away. Selena was afraid Mrs. Sanchez could see mom in me, and so she had to force me to disguise myself. Wow, this was seriously messed up. Keep your identity a secret by all means or we're doomed. Understand? I was in complete shock, but I knew I had to be more careful from then on. For the whole week after, Mrs. Sanchez seemed to be in a good mood. One day, she even asked me to go shopping with her. But a wedding dress studio? Is there a wedding coming, ma'am? Yes, and it's yours, you filth. You have to pay for your mom's karma for stealing my husband. So she knew everything? I tried to bolt away, but immediately got caught. Then she took me to this luxurious house, and guess who I met? Kaylee, what are you doing here? Uh, Austin? What? What do you want? I was still bewildered when a man pushed a boy in a wheelchair into the living room. Hi, Mr. Fisher, about our arrangement. This is the bride here. She and Ivan here will make the perfect couple. Hope you like this gift as my thanks for your favor. My blessings for the marriage and your family. Dad, what is she talking about? Ivan will get married to this girl. I've already settled everything so that Ivan can have a bright future without worrying about anything. Excuse me? I've had to put aside my art dream to enroll in business school, as you wished, and now you want to control my brother's life too? I object to this marriage, because I love her! Then he pulled me away, leaving Mr. Fisher frozen in shock. Kaylee, I'm so sorry you had to meet my dad in such an awful way. I promise to never let anyone treat you like this again. No worries, I have to thank you instead. Your words really woke up the courage in me. Austin offered to help me talk things out, but it's time for me to fight for my own good. I came back home to see Mrs. Sanchez flying into a rage. How dare you bring your face back into this house! You cruel woman! I will not marry someone else just to pay off your debt! Right at that moment, Selena walked in, and she literally turned into a bull. How dare you do that to my child! I had to stop her from lunging towards Mrs. Sanchez. So how about what you all have done to me? Do you know what I've been through all these years? Her mom stole my husband, and you just expect me to put it aside? Then, she collapsed and burst into tears. Suddenly, I felt bad for her. I'm sorry for everything that happened to you, but it doesn't mean you have to punish yourself with it, or grant yourself the right to dictate others like that. She owes you nothing, and you have no right to control others' lives. Right after that, Selena and I packed our stuff and left the house. Walking through that door, we felt more free than ever before. After all that drama, it took us some time to get our lives back on track. From all the money Selena had saved working as a maid, she was able to open her own bakery and take back control of our lives. And so do I. Finally, I'm back to my princess style. But after all those craziest things happened, something never changed. Oh my god, oh my god, we're half-sisters! Yay! Ah, uh, my mom said she felt so guilty about what happened, but asked me to keep it a secret. Oops. And about that guy, you ask? He worked things out with his dad, and guess what? He's in art school now. 
Okay, now tilt your head to the right. Yeah, like that. Gosh, that dress makes you look like a fairy princess. Who dare to make a princess stay still like a statue for more than one hour? Huh? The charming artist? Shh, it's almost done. I beg your pardon. Hi, I'm Celine, and I've called the St. Augustine Orphanage home since I was six, but I'm not actually an orphan. You see, my parents are special agents with secret identities. Sweetie, if one day someone suspicious asks you about your parents, run for your life. I was used to these fleeting, ghost-like visits from my parents. They often took turns sneaking in and out at night, spending the little time they had with me, and always came together for my birthday. And even though I didn't see them much, they taught me some awesome skills. By the age of 12, I was fluent in five languages, could play a variety of instruments, and do a butterfly kick on anyone who needed it. Despite living a secret life and not seeing my parents as much as I wanted, I still felt lucky that I had them both in my life. It's my 17th birthday, a day I should be super excited about. You see, my parents always visit me together on my birthday, but I've been waiting here for ages and there's no sign of them. This was the first year this had happened. I didn't like it one bit. Something was definitely up. The next day in church, we were singing hymns when I spotted this strange man in the crowd staring at me. My instinct were telling me something was up, so I eavesdropped on him talking to a nun. That girl with blonde hair. How exactly did her parents pass away? He asked about my parents. That meant my life was in real danger. I fled with all my survival skills right away. What really happened to my parents? Have their identities been revealed? I didn't dare to think about it. So I made sure no one was following me before going to the subway and looking for a baggage locker. This was where I needed to come in a run-for-my-life situation. I waited until nobody was around before I opened it with my key. Inside was some money, a dossier documenting a girl's life from childhood to old age, and a letter. Our darling Celine, we're very sorry that you didn't have the normal childhood you deserved. Please don't ever doubt that we cherish and love you with all of our hearts. If you're reading this, it means our identities have been compromised. We've included the documents for your new identity. Stay strong. We will reunite soon. You're a loving mom and dad. XO. If my parents could arrange all this for me, I believe that they could handle anything and come back to me soon. So here I am, under my new identity, Diane. Australia, here I come. My parents left me just enough money to start a new life here, pay for rent, and tuition fees. How perfectly ordinary! Diane's parents were researchers away in the Arctic. She's from a basic family and attended normal public schools, then worked as an office accountant, did not marry or have children. Everything was boringly safe. The thing is, if I was going to be someone else, then I should at least be someone fun. So I didn't start school. Instead, I created and adopted the identity of 20-year-old Harper and started my first money-making idea, Marriage on Demand. With all I'd learned from my parents, I could make a whole lot of money and at the same time experience how a normal family would look like. Perfect! First, I became a Harvard doctor graduate so this privileged guy's parents would give him his inheritance. Next, a posh aristocrat who saved my client from a dreadful arranged marriage. And then, a sweet-natured girl who helped my client intimidate their seriously mean friends. As soon as my clients achieved their goals, the contract ended and we went our separate ways. Before I knew it, through my Harper alias, I'd married nine guys in just eight months and become eye-wateringly rich. But as it turned out, the cases I took were all abnormal families. This 10th contract would be my final case. Then I'd say goodbye to Harper and attend college as Diane before I lost all faith in ever getting the family of my dreams. But while driving to my rendezvous, I swear that car was following me. It could be my parents or someone dangerous. Only one way to find out. Now I just had to wait. If they were dangerous, I'd drive straight off this cliff, then swim to safety. Then I saw this gormless, grinning guy peer through my window. He held up a temporary girlfriend contract. Hey, I just want to talk. Could he be my 10th client? Either way, he seemed harmless, so I stepped out of the car. I'm Carlton from the courthouse. You've sure been busy, so I've been assigned to investigate you. As far as I'm aware, it's not illegal to marry multiple times, is it? No, only if they're real and not marriage contracts. Carlton, I only have one client left and I'm not marrying him. I'm his temporary girlfriend, which I believe is legal. So, is there any chance you could turn a blind eye this one last time? Legal or not, I strongly advise you to quit this job and do something more morally upright. 
Just then, a black car pulled over and a man walked straight towards us. Oh no, had they found me? I'm sorry for getting you into trouble. I turned around, ready to jump, but Carlton suddenly held my hand back. No need for that. My boss won't eat you alive. Besides, I haven't told anyone about the contracts yet. Oh, so this man's his boss from the court? Turns out he and his wife happened to see Carlton on their way to the airport and just came to say hi. Hey, Carl, it doesn't say much if this girl would rather jump into the sea than date you. He looked really awkward and I felt bad for the guy. Without thinking it through, I clung onto his arm and gave him my best adoring look. Actually, we're deeply in love. I'm an adrenaline junkie, but you know Carl, he's just so strict about things like this. You're right, Carl is rather stiff. If you loosened up a bit, you may have been promoted by now. After they left, I explained to Carlton that's what my job is, helping nice guys out of unnecessary trouble. Nothing immoral about it. I was about to leave when he suddenly stopped me. I could see his attitude changed. Please, make a contract with me. I know you could help me improve my communication skills and get me promoted. You can see how desperate I am right now. I wasn't sure. I mean, number 10 was meant to be my last client, but just look at that clueless face. Fine, but in return, you must be an attentive boyfriend, and I want to have dinner with you and your family every evening. Carl looked a bit confused, but he agreed to my demands. Ugh, this was probably my last chance to experience a family life. I have a strict don't be wife two people at the same time rule, so I'm meeting my other client to gently turn him down. Celine, is that you? S Celine, he knew my name? OMG, that's Matten, the genius pianist from the orphanage. Oh no, this was terrible. He could blow my cover. I, um, I was adopted and go by Harper now. My adoptive parents turned out to be a letdown. I had to fake my identity so I could work on my own. I understand. It's so hard for orphans like us to survive. Yes, it sure is. Look, Matten, things got pretty difficult for me, so I had to take another job in a hurry. I can't do two jobs at once. I'm sorry I have to cancel our contract. Yeah, about that. I already publicly announced I have a girlfriend just a second ago. Pianist prodigy Matten confirmed he's currently dating someone? Matten, I really can't do this. Just tell me who your client is. I can make a deal with him. I can't be with them both, so I called an emergency meeting for them to plead their cases. An article accused me of inappropriate behavior towards female artists. It's completely false, of course. I need a girlfriend to distract the public and make them see I'm not a jerk. I want this promotion. If you won't help me, I'll expose you publicly. Pfft, like that matters. I'll just take you back to the US. No, I can't go back there, and I don't want any attention from people either. This is what I'm gonna do, Carl. I'll be your girlfriend on weekdays and do anything I can to help you get promoted. In Matin, I'll be your girlfriend, well, pretend to be your girlfriend on the weekend. But my face has to stay out of the media, okay? Once this is done, then it's goodbye Harper and hello trouble-free, simple Diane. All I have to do is play some music while Matten listens and lets the paparazzi snap photos. I've always admired the way you play music. It follows no rules, but that's what makes it so fearless and fun. His comment made me pine for my parents. They were the reason I played like that. They taught me in the dark, told me to flow with the rhythms without any rules. I miss them so much. I must admit I'd always had a crush on you. When this is over, I want to protect you. I want to be your family. This was sweet, but he didn't know that I already had a family. I just needed to be patient. Then eventually, they'll be back. On weekdays, I joined Carlton for lunch at work and helped him talk to his co-workers and grumpy boss. Then in the evening, I went to his house and gave him tips on how to be more charismatic, make people trust and warm up to him. I also taught him how to walk without slouching and politely greet people. Hi, Mr. Chair. You look great today. Oh, Miss Lamp, are you okay? You shouldn't lose more weight. You're already gorgeous. Isn't that too much? I've never talked like this before. You're doing great. Carlton followed all my advice. He might be a bit clumsy, but in a cute, endearing way. Still, what I anticipated most was joining his family for dinner. I'd never experienced the cozy and warm atmosphere of a family dinner before. Who knew Carl was such a great cook? And so sweet. After only one week, Carl now had friends at work and his boss gave him extra responsibilities. Meanwhile, Matten's reputation also made a rebound thanks to articles like, he doesn't want to be around other girls because he's so passionately in love with this amazing muse. A frantic week quickly passed, which ended with Carlton's family celebrating his new position, all thanks to me. I was so moved I almost cried, but noticed Carlton seemed off. Maybe he was bummed out as he knew this was the end of our contract. After dinner, we went for a stroll around the garden. Then he blurted out, Who are you really? 
I was super surprised. Then he told me that one of his new jobs was to investigate a girl called Diane who entered the country, then vanished. I know you're Diane. I can recognize those eyes anywhere. Yes, I'm Diane, but I only faked my identity to earn money. I know you're lying again. It's fine, you've helped me, so I'll help you too. I faked some info to close the case. Thank you, Carl. This means a lot. I knew how important the laws were to him, but he still broke them. For me. I actually quit my job. What do you mean? What about your promotion? You've tried so hard for that. It's okay. I realized I didn't like it so much anyway. I felt terrible that he'd given up his job because of me. But he didn't need me anymore. Our contract had to end, right? Now it's time to end Matten's contract. Then I can go back to being Diane. However, I showed up at the villa to a swarm of reporters. Are you Matten's girlfriend? Please get out of the car. Are you the girl who dates him for dollars, not love? Please show yourself and verify the news. Looks like the news of Matten's girlfriend being a girl who only married for money had leaked. I sat there not knowing what to do. Then I saw Matten coming out of the villa hand in hand with some shiny haired girl. These rumors about my girlfriend are all lies. Amber is a wonderful, kind hearted soul and I couldn't be happier. Oh, I suppose that's pretty smart of him. Finding someone with a nice background was the only way to save his reputation for now. Goodbye, Matten. I wish you well. It seems he couldn't bring himself to ruin his career to protect me the way Carlton did. Now I was free to be Diane and attend this public school my parents wanted me to. Hmm, I was wondering when you'd show up. You're rather popular. A man with a scar has been asking about you. Someone with a scar was looking for Diane? The moment I realized someone was watching me behind the door, my instinct told me to run for my life. I rushed to the window and jumped down, just to catch Carlton peeping at me. What are you doing here? I wanted to see you, so I tracked down Diane. I didn't expect to find you here, but I like you a lot, and there was no time. They saw us together, so I pulled him away. You're driving like crazy, Diane. Who are they? Why are they chasing us? I don't know. All I know is that they're dangerous. He took his phone out to call 911, but I stopped him. No cops. I can't trust anyone but myself, Carl. I'm so sorry for dragging you into this mess. My parents often told me the best way to escape a chase is to jump into the water. However crazy it seems, please trust me. I took a sudden turn and plunged the car straight into the sea. In the water, I unfastened the seatbelt and turned to see Carl already got out of his. He pulled my hand and we swam through the window. The waves drifted us onto a beach, but I had no strength left to move an inch. They're gonna catch us. Celine, sweetie, please wake up. I rubbed my eyes and saw the golden sand, Carlton, and my mom and dad? Am I dead? M mom? No, sweetie, you're very much alive. Turns out the people chasing us were my parents. After 10 years on the job, they finally eliminated the criminal gang and retired. Dad ended up getting the scar, but it's all over now. We could finally be a normal family. You sure made it hard for us to track you down by using a different identity. We should have known our cunning daughter would have created a more challenging life. Like father, like daughter. Huh? You're not Diane? Carlton, my name's Celine. Mom, Dad, this is Carlton, my boyfriend. It was so cute seeing him blush. Then he quickly held his hand out and introduced himself to them. It's lovely to meet you both. I care greatly for your daughter and I always will, no matter how mischievous she is. Turns out it's pretty amazing just being Celine. I started school as myself and so far, so good. I'm living with my kind, talented, and normal parents. We're having the best time together, and I get to date this cute, caring chef. The best part is I can finally stop running for my life and just enjoy the people I love most. Hi guys, it's me, Claire. So tomorrow is gonna be super exciting. I'm putting my life in your hands, literally, as I'm gonna be doing a My Instagram Followers Control My Day video. Yay! Most influencers do this with options, but I trust you guys, so go wild. Just visit my Instagram, like this video, and comment on whatever you want me to do tomorrow. The comments with the most likes will be chosen, and don't forget to follow me to stay updated. As you can see, I'm Claire, and I'm a beauty influencer on Instagram. Of course, with this pretty face and eye for style, I already have loads of followers. But for someone who was born to be famous like me, that's not enough. That's why I'm doing this viral challenge. It'll get me tens of thousands of likes. Okay, that's it for today. Now I better get my beauty sleep. Gotta have glowing skin tomorrow. 
the first thing to do in the morning was to check my Instagram. 20,000 likes from my post last night. That's average. Let's see. I asked my followers to decide what I should wear and what I should eat for breakfast. And the most liked comments were about Y2K style and avocado toast. My favorite dish anyway. Easy peasy. I called the maid to prepare breakfast while I did my skincare routine. Then I made sure I took a cute selfie and uploaded it to my story. What a good start. Am I the cutest girl on earth or what? Okay, now I have to make a very difficult decision. Which bag best complements my outfit? This one or this one? I was still trying to decide when my phone rang. Ugh, that's Liam, my boyfriend. It's so early, yet he's already sent me a ton of messages. What are you doing? Why didn't you reply to any of my texts? Hurry up if you don't want to be late for school. All right, all right, I'm coming. Jeez, why does he have to be so stressy? It doesn't matter if we're a little late. I mean, come on, it's only school. After choosing the right bag, I got into Liam's car. He frowned at me and asked me what took so long. I was busy taking selfies. I replied and posted a mirror selfie I took earlier on my Instagram with the caption, Y2K style for today. What should I do at school this morning? At break time, I was sitting in the cafeteria with Liam and my bestie, Tori. As usual, my beauty was attracting attention. All eyes were on me, and one guy even gushed out, You're so pretty, Claire. <laughs> I checked my Instagram to see how my newly posted pic was doing. Oh, it already had 50,000 likes. That's good, but I know with my charisma, I can do even better. But, huh? What's this? The most liked comment on the post wants me to go to the school library and scream, I hate studying and the library is the most boring place on earth. What kind of request is this? Don't do it. I don't have a good feeling about this. It could be from someone who's trying to sabotage you. Liam has a point. This could just be a trick that Isabella, my rival at school, devised to embarrass me. She's also an influencer on Instagram, but she just copies everything I do. Her Instagram is 5,000 followers less than mine. Yawn. But Claire, how are you going to explain to your followers if you bail out? I don't think they'd be happy about it. Hmm, right. I'm doing a challenge, aren't I? Can't stop after only two comments, especially because one from anti-fan. Besides, this is no big deal, right? Who even goes to the library anymore? So, I dragged Liam and Tori to the library. As you know, I need them to film me. Huh? Why was it so ridiculously busy in here? Since when did people actually want to study? I needed to get this over with. So breaking through the silence, I shouted, I hate studying, and the library is the most boring place on earth. All eyes instantly fell on me and I heard tuts and grunts. Then someone said, What the hell are you doing? Ugh. Why is everyone in here so serious? I just shrugged and walked away. At least Liam and Tori had captured me at my best angle. To my surprise, that video gained me a load of views and likes, and I even earned nearly 1,000 more followers. Who would have thought that such a silly act would get so popular? At that moment, Isabella walked past me. Only brainless people would scream in the library. Huh, look who's jealous now. Hey, you might as well try that. Maybe you'll get half of my followers. Isabella looks like she's about to explode with anger. <laughs> but then she sneered and said, Let's see if you're still laughing after you see what you've got to do next. Huh? What is she on about? I immediately opened my Insta to check. What? The top comment this time was from Isabella. She wants me to put a trash bag on my head and go to the mall. Ew, trash bag? I spent an hour styling my hair this morning. Isabella, you wicked witch. But okay, if she wants to play, I'll prove to her that she's messing with the wrong person. Just like last time, Liam tried to talk me out of it. This is nonsense, Claire. 
Don't lower yourself to this level just for a few likes. I told him he was overreacting, and that I wasn't going to let my followers down by bottling out of it. This seemed to annoy him, and he stormed off. Um, so who's going to take videos for me? I called out, but Liam just kept walking. Why can't he just support me like usual? Luckily, I still had Tori, and she agreed to film it for me. That's what best friends are for. Okay, this is more embarrassing than I thought. People keep staring at me like I'm an alien. I gave them a, what are you looking at, stare, prompting them to quickly turn away. No, I have to act confidently for the video to get more likes. Looking over, I saw Tori cheering me on, so I took a deep breath, stood up straight, and did my best catwalk strut through the mall. My heart was pounding like crazy, even after we walked out of the mall. Phew, it was finally over. I then quickly opened up my Insta, uploaded the video I just shot, then texted Liam asking where he was. After that, Tori and I got in a taxi to his house. Liam was already waiting for me at the door, looking all serious when I got there. So I told Tori to wait in the taxi. Then angrily I shouted as I walked over to him, You could have at least come and supported me. Do you know how upset I was when you just left like that? I wasn't comfortable filming you make a fool of yourself. I care about you too much. It's just a bit of harmless fun. Why can't you understand how important being an influencer is to me? <sighs> I don't think I can be with someone who doesn't support me and my passion anymore. We should break up. Then I just walked away, not giving Liam a chance to explain. He quickly ran over and grabbed my hand. Okay, I'm sorry. Can we talk it out? <laughs> it worked! I gestured to Tori, then turned around with a big smile at Liam. Can you believe the followers want me to test your love by pretending to break up with you? I'll show them how much you love me. But then, unexpectedly, Liam angrily shouted, What? So, I'm just another tool to get likes for your Instagram? If you want to break up, then fine, we're done. Then he stormed into his house and slammed the door. I stood there open-mouthed. How could he break up with me? In the whole two years we've been together, I've never seen him this mad. I'll let him chill for a bit and talk to him tomorrow. He'll have calmed down by then. Right? Look, Claire! Your shopping mall video has already reached a hundred thousand likes! Oh my god, what is this? People are going crazy for my videos. They say I'm so confident, wearing a trash bag and still looking stylish. I look like Kendall Jenner. And my followers also increased by 5,000 people. At least this is worth the effort I put in. The next morning, I waited for Liam to pick me up. But he never arrived. When I got to school, I tracked him down and asked if he was still mad at me. You're so addicted to social media. I don't even know who you are anymore. Then he walked off. At that exact moment, Isabella walked towards me. Wait, why is Tori with her? Hey, loser, you're in so much trouble. What does that mean? I looked at Tori in confusion, but she just lowered her head and quickly followed Isabella. Feeling something was wrong, I immediately opened Instagram and... Oh my god... What are these comments? Such an attention seeker. She's willing to do anything just for some likes. I heard that her boyfriend broke up with her. No surprises there. <laughs> what is this? I did all these things at their requests, and now I'm the one receiving all the hate? Suddenly, the principal announced via the loudspeaker that I had to go to his office. As I walked in, I saw my parents sitting there. Turns out news of what I did at the library had spread. But not only that, someone even accused me of stealing from the shopping mall. Huh? I didn't steal anything. To prove my innocence, I gave the principal my bag to check. And he pulled out a brand new necklace. Why is this thing in my bag? I tried explaining myself, but no one would listen. I was suspended for a week.
The walkout of the principal's office was the worst thing ever. Everyone was giving me judging looks and whispering to each other. On the way home, I took a teary selfie and posted it on Instagram with the caption, Consequences of yesterday's challenge. One week suspension. Someone put the blame on me. Once home, my ashamed-looking parents immediately took my phone away and even disconnected the Wi-Fi. Ugh! My life was over! I ran up to my room in a huff and flopped down onto my bed. Suddenly, my eyes crossed a photo I took with Liam on my birthday last year. That's when Liam threw me a surprise party, and he even made me a cute birthday cake. Come to think of it, I was a bit too harsh with him yesterday. He was only trying to protect me. If I'd listened to him, I wouldn't have all these hate comments and be stuck home for a week. I hurt Liam just to gain more followers. How could I be so stupid? I wished I could apologize to him right now, but... <sighs> then to my surprise, after just three days, my mom told me I was allowed back to school. There were still mutters about me, but that didn't matter, as Liam was waiting for me at my locker. I hurried over to him, apologized, and explained everything. Claire, I know you're the sweetest, most loving girl. You just got carried away with your frivolous Instagram popularity. Besides, I know you're not a thief. Then Liam told me that out of suspicion, he asked to check different CCTV at the shopping mall and discovered that it was Tori who dropped the necklace box into my bag. Turns out, she was only hanging out with me because I was famous and rich. So when Isabella paid her, she turned 180 degrees, running after Isabella and playing tricks on me. Liam reported this to the principal, and now both of them have been suspended. That's it. Chasing after popularity on the internet didn't bring me any real friends but only virtual fans, and a fake friend, sadly. I got blindsided by the likes and followers and overlooked what was truly important, my real-life relationships and the people who genuinely care for me. After that incident, I decided to deactivate my Instagram account for a while, at least until I feel stable again. And even if I lose all my followers, I don't really mind anymore. Because right now, I'm spending time with those who really matter to me.